morning market live stream we've got i hope you all had a great weekend i hope you all had uh, a good night's rest because we've got a lot to talk about today and hopefully none of you guys were holding tesla stock if you guys look at the chart it does not look too good for tesla you can see uh tesla got pooped on this weekend elon musk put out a tweet i'm sure a lot of you guys are aware especially those of you who are holding tesla but tesla took a pretty big dump uh all the way down to lows of 11:30 right here and uh it looks like we did regain a little bit during some of the pre-market, but we're still around 1160 compared to where we closed and, uh, you know, above 1200. So a big dump for Tesla stock. Daniel Borrego says, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Daniel. Uh, but yeah, Tesla got dumped on because Elon actually sent out a tweet. And uh, I'll, I'll say it right now, but we'll we'll cover it when a couple more people get into the stream. But I'll, I'll put out the tweet right here. You can see <clears throat> Elon also changed his name on Twitter to Lord Edge. So uh, another interesting development with that. But uh, he said, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance. So I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? And uh, the options were yes or no. And he said, I will abide by the results of this poll, whichever way it goes. And then he also made a joke and said, abide. But <laughs> the votes uh, came in the majority for yes, he should sell 10% of his Tesla stock. So we're going to see. I mean, maybe he's already started. Maybe he's uh, going to do it at market open and drop Tesla down to 50 bucks a share or something. Who knows what's going to happen uh, when Elon sells. But uh, you can see that already in anticipation, people have started dumping their Tesla stock. Tesla's down a decent percentage. Let's see exactly how much it's down right here. It's down about uh, this moment, down about 5%. So down about 5% from where it closed, just off the news that Elon's going to sell some of his shares. And uh and it's not looking great for Tesla. If we actually pull it up, we can pull up Tesla's market cap right here. Uh, Tesla has a market cap, I think, of over a trillion right now. And Elon Musk. Okay, yeah. So Tesla's market cap, $1.227 trillion right there. So Tesla has a massive market cap. Elon Musk has a massive net worth. He's the richest individual in the world right now, at least publicly. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. Um, so we can pull up Elon Musk net worth. Or actually, let's pull up that list of the world's richest billionaires or whatever. So that's a more interesting one. Christopher Wong, good morning. And Manny C, good morning. Let's go, Mark, he says. Yep. <laughs> okay, so real-time billionaires we have right here. And it looks like Elon Musk is still in the lead with, 300, with over 300 billion more than 50% uh, over what Jeff Bezos has. So uh, cool stuff. And he's only 50 years old. Jeff Jeff is 57. So he's beating him there. He's beating him uh, money-wise, age-wise, everything. We'll see. We'll see if uh, how up-to-date this is, right? This might change, actually, when market opens or over the next couple of hours because Tesla just opened much lower than where it was beforehand. So uh, we'll see. But yeah, Tesla's down about 5% on this news. Uh, we were talking about it, but we have the tweet right here. We can pull it up. Uh, Elon Musk proposing to sell 10% of his Tesla stock, asking his supporters or asking his you know followers if they support it. And uh, he's abiding by the poll or abiding by the poll as he corrected himself. So uh, yeah, most of the people wanted him to. It looks like he's going to sell 10%. Who knows if he's already started. However, <clears throat> I believe most of his worth or most of his, yeah, most of his net worth uh, of this $300 billion is in Tesla stock. So Let's assume that he's selling about $30 billion worth of Tesla stock. Uh, that's a that's a decent part of Tesla's market cap, right? That's a decent part, right? Tesla has a market cap of $1.22 trillion, so not the largest uh, percentage of Tesla's market cap, but a decent amount um, for someone to just be dropping onto the market considering that he's been holding it this whole time, right? He was never uh, selling Tesla stock before now, essentially lowering the available float. So Tim Papa says, good morning, good morning, Tim, and... Uh, it looks like we've got about 30 viewers in the stream and about four likes. You guys know the drill. If we could uh, ramp up the likes a little bit just to help get this stream out to a couple more people, uh, try to try to get some more comments rolling in. That always helps out. If we could maybe get this to 15 likes or so, we'll see if we can do it right off the bat in the first five minutes of the stream. That would be impressive. But it looks like Tesla might be having a little bit of a comeback uh, starting up right before the market opens. So we'll see. I mean, some people obviously, you know, they've been watching Tesla rise for a while. And uh, they might be wanting to buy into the dip if there's uh, even even a slight dip down to 1160, even though, you know, if they bought just a week or two before, they would have been getting it for much cheaper. Uh, Hobby Outlet says, morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. 
Uh, we're, we're looking at Tesla pretty closely today, but we will switch to the four stock view now that we've uh, now that we've covered Tesla a little bit. But we'll put Tesla up here because I'm curious what's going to happen at market open with Tesla. Then we'll pull up DWAC, which I believe is actually a little bit up on the day, right? And pre-market DWAC is up a little bit. So yeah, up to 57. We closed around 56. Now we're up above 57 with DWAC. And we'll see where Prague is going. I think it's below. No, it got back up above 350. So last I checked, it was a little bit below, but that's good to see that we're holding the 350 support. That's nice. And uh, the last stock, I think, um, what was it? What did I say the last stock was in today's title? Uh, we'll, we'll take a peek at AMC, actually. We'll pull this up in the chart because it is up. It is up decently in pre-market. So closed around 41, and now it's uh, at 42-something. So we'll see. Nilesh says, good morning. Good morning, Nilesh. Good morning. We're looking at Tesla pretty closely. Uh Tesla, I don't know, you know, a lot of you guys may not have heard. If you're not Tesla holders, you probably haven't heard. Um, but Tesla is is likely going to be dipping over the next couple of days. Hassan says, good morning, good morning, Hassan. Uh, because of this Elon tweet, you know, for those of you who are just getting in, uh, Elon, who also changed his name on Twitter to Lord Edge, just said, much is made, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance. So I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? The options are yes or no. And uh, and he said he will abide by the results of the poll, whichever way it goes. Then he then he mentioned he's, he uh, changed abide to a Biden. So a little joke right there from Elon. Uh, so Junk and Irish says if Elon dumps, it will be a domino effect with small hedges getting out of their positions. Um, yeah, you know, Zach sent uh, Zach sent an interesting domino picture uh, over the weekend. So I really could see, you know, it could have a decent effect. You know, the S&P. Uh, is a market weighted index, and while we can we can take a peek at the S and P right now, it's still up on the day despite Tesla being down. So it's a it's a capitalization weighted index, the S and P. So uh, weighs stocks based off of their market capitalization, and Tesla will obviously you know since it's part of the S and P be a fairly heavy weighting in it because as a one point two two seven trillion dollar market cap, so Tesla dumping will have an effect on the S and P slightly, right? Uh, but it's not the greatest effect as you guys can see. Like obviously Tesla's down. The S and P is up, uh, so it's not it's not Tesla alone. I mean, Apple has a two trillion dollar market cap, so we can pull that up right here. Uh, so they're much more heavily weighted, you know, two point almost two point five trillion dollar market cap on Apple. So uh, Tesla, while it is a significant part of the S and P, it alone crashing. I don't know uh, if that'll be able to crash the markets. But Tanya, good morning. What are your thoughts on Facebook Meta? I think that Facebook is looking more promising than ever before. The fact that they're changing to Meta. And uh, really focusing on VR in the metaverse, I think that's a very promising way to take the company. You know, Facebook, uh, I could never really wrap my head around investing too much in Facebook when they were just, uh, you know, Facebook. And even though I knew they had Instagram and uh, and uh, I think WhatsApp, they had some other uh, platforms, uh, I just couldn't wrap my head around investing in Facebook because I never use Facebook. Uh, I know a lot of people do, um, but I think that the younger people tend to be out of Facebook, maybe more on Instagram and uh, TikTok and all that. But uh, I've, I've just not been a huge, a huge Facebook investor in the past, but now that they're changing their name to meta, it's looking a lot more promising. So Facebook is definitely something that I'll be looking into more. I have bought some Facebook recently and I never have before. Now that they're changing to meta, I think that's, uh, that's definitely going to be a good one looking forward. So, uh, Daryl Borrego says PHUN DWAC. Let's go. Mark Saucy Fredo says got it at 162. Let's see where Mark is right now. Okay, 164. So you're up. You're up a little bit. Nice. Um, all SPACs looking tall. I got in on the lows on all three. Nice, nice. And Tanya, thanks. Uh, Tim Blackburn, prob, probably meant to say Prague. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and Hassan says we should invest in different metaverse company over evil Facebook. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Facebook hasn't doesn't have the best reputation. They have um, in other countries and in African countries typically become a uh, uh, kind of taken over the mobile messaging market. You know, they they uh, have Facebook installed, pre-installed on all the phones that are sold in some company, uh, some countries, and uh, then it's kind of the only means that people can use to communicate. So uh, they have done some bad stuff, and they even do bad stuff in the U.S. with censorship and whatnot. But uh, that doesn't mean they're not going to be successful in the future. You know, that does, unfortunately, it doesn't mean that uh, they they could still make quite a bit of money and. Uh, it might not be a bad idea, you know, for uh, good people to buy up a lot of the Facebook shares and then have a controlling interest. It might not be a bad idea. I think you could uh, potentially do that and change them from 
maybe not changing from within. That might be a bit optimistic, but <laughs> you never know. There's always a chance. Uh, what do we have here? We had Prague. That's right. We had Prague. So Prague, yeah, back up above 350. Uh, it looks like, did we close above 350? Yeah, just barely. We closed above 350 on Friday. Uh, but we've been bouncing around a lot, trying to trying to decide which which end we're going to end up on, above or below. Hopefully above. Uh, hopefully above. We're hopefully going to be moving up with Prague. Uh, Dap Romeo, the bot, is back. Vinco Ventures, BBIG announces Form 10 registration. Yep, yep. I saw that this morning. BBIG will take a peek at. But they did spike up above uh, $5 for a bit. But over the past couple of minutes, um, they have been moving down. So they're down down to about 480 right now, but uh, they were, they closed at 461, so they might still open green. That's the hope, at least, with BBIG. Holding Prague, hope it does well today. PHUN been making me money lately, says Saucy Fredo. Yeah, PHUN, let's see. PHUN is down, down a touch today, but yeah, if you bought really early in the pre-market, you could be up. And uh, Prague as well. I'm hoping that Prague uh, can bounce off of 350 nicely. And uh, potentially get back above four today. We'll see. We we got shot down on Friday, right? We opened up around four and uh, got shot down back to our support at 350. Um, so not ideal. Not ideal to see the pattern kind of breaking, right? Where we would uh, continually pump up to new highs and then uh, and then get dumped a little bit. This time we didn't quite make new highs with Pro. Uh, yeah, with Prague. So it's not ideal, but that's that's okay. It could be worse. And Dap Romeo, not a bot, sir. Okay, okay, nice. I appreciate. it. I appreciate that. <laughs> then I appreciate the the comments. You do bring up interesting stocks. I always enjoy it, but uh, it's just so formal sometimes. It looks like a bot dapper. So thank you very much. And uh, Avis stocks says Jacob Parisi. We'll look at Avis. Look at Avis real quick and see what's going on with Avis. Uh, if it, if it pulls up, it's not pulling up on the chart for some reason. But American Vision Centers, we can. Uh, we can glean something from that. Let's look them up on Market Watch and see what they have going on. So Avis, American Vision. I'm not sure why it's not playing up on the chart, but uh, hopefully it will load in any second. In the meantime, though, um, okay, Market Watch doesn't have them either. All right. So is that the right under car? Oh, okay, under car. Oh, okay. So car stock, Avis budget group. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah we've uh, looked at car in the past. Now they did have a big spike up on their earnings. It looks like um, I've not I've not looked too deeply into car stock. They already seemed like a relatively large market cap. But let's see. Um, yeah, sixteen billion dollar market cap. I haven't looked too deeply into into car. I, I heard when they pumped, but I never quite looked looked at them. But let's see what they're all about. This is a good time to familiarize myself. So Avis Budget Group engages in the provision of vehicle sharing and rental services, operates through the Americas and international segments. The Americas segment licenses the company's brands to third parties for vehicle rentals and ancillary pro products and services in North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. Okay, so car renting company. All right. I guess that makes sense with the name, with the, with the ticker, car. Uh, so I wonder if there was any great news that they announced in addition to having a positive earnings call. So let's see. All right. So not seeing any, they stock on, or they uh, surge on strong quarterly results. That's the news I'm seeing on 11.2. And uh, then maybe they become kind of a trader stock. I think that traders may have piled into them, pumped them up, obviously, you know, a little bit more than uh, what they were worth up to 545. Now they're around 305. So so let's see what people are saying about it. Prague under Ortex Life Droid. Yep, we will. We will take a peek at Prague. Um, let's pull up the Ortex on Prague right here. I'm curious, actually. I haven't seen it myself since uh, last Friday. All memes looking good today. Yeah, OCGN and SBA looking steady. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, AMC's, AMC is up. The markets are up in general. So not surprising to see uh, things going well. But yeah, let's take a peek at Prague on Ortex and see what we've got. What has changed over the weekend, if anything? Okay, so it looks like short interest is up a bit. They may have found some additional shares to short. Maybe some additional, some brokers uh, started allowing shorting on them because the utilization is currently sitting at 96%. So most of the short shares uh, are, you know, most of them are shorted, but there are still some, uh, some to be shorted. So we'll see. Uh, the current short interest is 36.62%. 
Short interest changed 3.89%. So more shorts are piling into Prague, trying to push it down. Um, in Prague, we can pull up over car. Uh, yeah, so Prague is, is hopefully going to open up on the right side of 350 on the top. That's what we're hoping for. Um, and let's see, Prague or text data we just looked. Yep. So all memes looking good. OCGN and SBEA looking steady. Yeah, let's take a peek at SBEA. Uh, SBA, yep, not not too shabby, not too shabby. Isn't down all that much. Uh, down a couple cents, but not bad. And we'll take a look at OCGN now. OCGN also very, yeah, very stagnant, both of these. OCGN found, finding some support at $10, it looks like. So we could start to see, um, you know, maybe this earnings call will instigate it. Another little rally in OCGN. It wouldn't surprise me to see us get up to 11 or 12, um, just because we did dump quite a bit off of good news for the stock, right? And the fact that we're finding support at 10. We'll have to see what happens with it, though. Um, PLTR earnings tomorrow. PLT, Palantir, yeah. Let's take a look at Palantir. Yep, looks like they've got a little support at 26. We've we've drawn out from uh, days past. <laughs> or maybe it was actually resistance about that they had. Yeah, back there. Uh, it was a mixture of resistance and support, it looks like. So uh, 26, important level for Palantir. And uh, they've got an earnings call coming up tomorrow morning. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, that could be good or it could be bad. Got burnt on OCG and A touching that. Well, yeah, yeah, it did. It did definitely hurt a lot of people, especially on that good news. It just dumped uh, a little bit too much, in my opinion. So Hassan, car is dead and scary for a short term trade. Yeah, yeah, it's a little scary, right? It's it's up. It's up quite a bit already, almost double the price that it was at uh, pre pump. But the earnings call was decent. So we'll have to see what happens with car. Um, let's see, Zach Taylor, I'm putting a one share limit order of 850 for Tesla. Nice. Yeah, Tesla. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it'll get down that low, but we'll see only 12 trading days ago. Oh, yeah, I know. That's yeah, that's the crazy part. It's risen quite a bit. I mean, we'll see what happens if Elon really sells. I don't know. I just don't know if I see Tesla dumping in a straight line down. It might. It might, though. It's not out of the question, right? Uh, Elon has probably about 30 billion worth of Tesla that he's going to sell. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It's very possible that this thing could just just tank as he starts loading those those shares off into the market because those are shares he's been holding for eternity pretty much, right? He's never been uh, selling those shares. He's essentially raising the free float. Uh, you know, when you look at Tesla's market cap, we can take a look at the market cap of Tesla real quick because this is something that I've thought about. Um, when you take a look at Tesla's market cap, the fact that Elon is holding about $300 billion worth of Tesla uh, somewhere around there, right? That's that's his net worth, and most of it's in Tesla stock, uh, and some of it, you know, is in SpaceX. So not not all of it's Tesla, but even if it's just two hundred billion, that's still that still makes this only a one trillion dollar market cap instead of one point two. So uh, really, you know, you see the market cap, and it's it's much much lower than it is, uh, considering that Elon's just been holding his shares perpetually and never needs to sell them. So we'll see what happens with it. We'll see. And it looks like we've got about 63 viewers in the stream. If we could bump it up a little bit, uh, uh, not, or not viewers, but if we could bump up the likes, we have about 31. Maybe we could get up to 40. If we get nine additional likes, uh, it does help get the stream out to more people, and it's much appreciated when people like the stream. We've already got 34 now. So it looks like people are heeding the call, but <laughs> we can always uh, we can always bump it up a couple more, just a couple more. So uh, something I actually wanted to do is make a poll about what are your top uh, most bullish plays. What do you guys think? Uh, you what do you what stocks do you guys think you're most bullish on? So uh, not not the way we've traditionally done these polls though, where we just have four options. In fact, the options it doesn't even matter if you vote in the poll. What matters is that you comment the stocks that you're most bullish on. So what stock are you most bullish on right now? We'll ask that as, as a poll question, and you say, um, I'll leave my answer in the comments. Oh, I see. Oh, we, wow, but there's a real limit on this. Okay. And there we go. Almost done typing out this poll. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. So, there we go. We got the poll coming up. We got the poll coming up, and we've got people saying, uh, LONQ and Lucid. Just, or Hold on. We, we missed a couple comments. So, Dapromeo, SoFi. Yeah, I like SoFi also. Um, I like SoFi. I did buy into SoFi recently. And bullish on METX. Jacob Parisi says, SoFi. Hi, Rob. Please check SBET as it's only about a 2 million float. We will look at SBET. We, something tells me we're going to get a lot of stocks coming in real quick. So we'll look at this huh, SBT real quick. So Sharplink Gaming. I think we may have looked at this. Um, maybe last Friday we looked at this. But let's take a peek at SBET on Yahoo and see what they've got. So $58 million market cap. And... Yep, about a $2.4 million or a 2.4 million share count float. All right. So SBET, yeah, decent, decently low market cap. Let's see what the short interest is on this. I'm curious if people are trying to push it down or if, uh, if it might, de- might be a decent company. So, yeah, not too many shorts on it. So it obviously isn't a cruddy company. Otherwise, there would be. And, uh, yeah, we'll pull up the Prague Ortex real quick. We'll pull up the Prague Ortex. Uh, here you guys go. Prague Ortex for that. Uh, for who was asking? Let's see. Antics the Legend. Yeah, we were looking at Prague Ortex earlier, but we'll pull it up real quick. So 3.89% increase in the short change brings us up to a 36.62% short interest as a percentage of the free float. And then the utilization is 96.51. So it looks like they found some additional shares to short, uh, but haven't quite shorted them yet. So SHIB is dropping. Yeah, we do need to look at SHIB. Uh, we definitely need to look at SHIB. I've, I've noticed SHIB is down a bit. Um, so Sharplink Gaming, though, I wanted to look at that real quick. So um, let's see what they're doing on Market Watch real quick, because that, is, that always has a good description of, of the company. Um, SBET, hopefully they've got it nice, nice. And no description. So too small of a company. They haven't bothered describing what it does, but I'm assuming they do something uh, with gaming. That would make a lot of sense. So... Uh, they're also buying back shares. All right, all right. Nice, nice. And Zach Taylor says gold, silver, DWAC, and SBEA. Yeah, those are good ones over the long term. I think those are really good ones. Uh, SG says AMC and BKKT. Hassan says ME and PLTR, Trump Specs and Prague. DWAC, DWAC, DWAC attack, Michael Shocker says. Yeah, yeah, these are good ones, guys. I like all these. Lucid, there's no stock that's been mentioned that I haven't liked yet. So uh, Tesla. Yeah, Tesla over the long term, Leo, but who knows what's going to happen. You know, I mean, looking at Tesla after the Elon tweet, if you just got here, if you haven't seen the Elon tweet, I'll pull out the Elon tweet for those of you who haven't seen this weekend, Lord Edge, as he calls himself now, uh, Elon Musk, we changed, just changed his name on, uh, to Lord Edge on Twitter, but um, he just said, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance. So I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? And then he commented, I will abide by the results of this poll, whichever way it goes. And then he corrected that to say a Biden. So a little bit of a joke right there on Elon's part. We appreciate that. Uh, but it looks like the poll is in support, right? 57.9% of voters uh, decided he should sell his Tesla stock. So he will be selling Tesla if, if we are to believe him. Uh, and Tesla has dropped quite a bit on this news, right? They're down about 5% just in the pre-market. Can't see charts. Of course, of course, I've, of course I've done that again. But... <laughs> Of course. Uh, I don't know what button I'm clicking when I'm clicking one, uh, but one is the key that I have uh, mapped to change the camera. So I should really uh, change the hockeys, but (laughs) I just haven't gotten around to that yet. Yeah. Anyways, um, you can see Tesla's down about 5%. And I did have the Tesla tweet, so I will pull up. uh, I will pull up the Tesla tweet and then the prog data. Who knows if that was uh, if we missed that because. Uh, we may have we may have missed the prog data as well, at least the chart uh, on screen. So you can see the, the the Elon tweet right here real quick. Just for those of you who haven't seen uh, polls closed at this point, so it's too late to try and stop him. But uh, it looks like he will be be selling his Tesla stock. So and also the prog data for uh, who was asking. There we go. It's up here. You can see it for yourself and pause the video if you want. Um, but we did read it out. So maybe that maybe that got you. But Michael Shocker says it's going to take a while for him to sell all that Tesla. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. I mean, it would be pretty brutal <laughs> and uh, a nasty joke to all the shareholders if he just uh, market open, put in a market order uh, to sell 
about 30 billion worth of Tesla stock. That would <laughs> that would have a nasty impact on the price. It would be a great buying opportunity. I'd be buying up Tesla stock at 50 bucks a share if that was the case. I'd be buying up a lot of Tesla, but uh, it would be very interesting to see him selling it uh, all that quickly. But uh, let's see. Look at BGFV. Special $1 dividend coming next week, plus a $0.25 cent dividend next month, 47% of shares short, and most shorts under $28. Let's, okay, BGFV. We'll take a look. BGFV. Let's see. They have been doing decently lately, right? They're up from uh, lows of 24 just about. Their earnings call bumped them up a bit. And they do have that special dividend coming out on November 16th. So, yeah, they've been doing good over the past 30 days. Over the past year, they've been doing even better. Uh, I think we may have looked at this. Yeah, Big Five Sporting Goods Corp. Yep, we looked at this um, the other day. I think it might have been Friday that we took a peek at this. BGFV. Um, I think they just provide sporting equipment, but we'll, we'll take a look at the profile. So, they operate as a holding company. The firm engages in the retail of sporting goods. Its products include athletic shoes, apparel, and accessories, as well as outdoor athletic equipment for team sports, fitness, camping, hunting, fin fishing, tennis, golf, winter and summer recreation, and roller sports. So, uh, yeah, not a bad industry to be in, right? I think that uh, especially the younger generation, even though a lot of people have turned to the screens and have started just watching the screens all the time, uh, I think a lot of people are also trending towards more athletic activities and uh, liking to do things outside, uh, myself included, right? I don't necessarily end up buying a bunch of equipment to do uh, athletic stuff. But um, I think that maybe eventually, you know, if I if I do it enough, then I'll I'll want some kind of equipment. I'm not sure. Uh, I've never really felt the needs to buy anything from a sporting goods store. But uh, it could be a good industry to be in. It could be. And uh, especially, you know, if they're selling stuff online. Let me check. Uh, big five. I guess we just find a big five sporting goods. Yeah, OK, here we go. So we can pull up their site. And it's an interesting site, a patriotic site. It looks like a lot of pop-up ads on this site. Um, and let me make sure that I didn't mess up the camera. Good. So we've got the camera, but Big Five Sporting Goods right here, Veterans Day Sale. Uh, so, yeah, they're selling some stuff. They've got a bunch of things available, it looks like. It's a bit of a messy site. Um, so they offer quite a bit, but there's almost almost uh, too many options, right? That's, that's a psychological thing uh, that a lot of people end up suffering with, right? Uh, where they, they look at a site or, uh, you know, some options at a store even, and it's a psychological trick. You learn about it in psych class in college, but uh, if there's too many options, then then people don't know which one to choose, and they end up buying nothing. It's kind of the same, like, if, you have, if you're selling water bottles or something like that, and you have a million different colors for people to choose from, uh, people end up not... Uh, choosing anything, right? They just they just can't decide and they don't get any of the water bottles because there's too many options. But if you just have two colors, uh, you know, black or white, and then it's a lot easier for people to just choose which which they like. Uh, Michael Shocker says, what do you do for fun slash sport, Robin? Oh, what state do you live in? I live in North Carolina. So unfortunately, a lot of the year, it's rather unpleasant, uh, very humid and hot a lot of the year. Doesn't stop me from going out every now and then. But this weekend, I was out hiking with a buddy and... Uh, I also, I work out most days just in the gym because that has AC and uh, a lot of heavy weights to lift. Uh, so I, I like to stay healthy doing that, uh, but I will go on runs and all that. But none of that really requires much sporting goods. You know, you're, you're out there walking. I guess I have shoes. I have running shoes, I suppose. I uh, didn't get them from a sporting goods store, but uh, they're just normal running shoes. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, I mean, if I was doing more stuff outside, more uh, niche things like camping and hunting and fishing, then definitely I'd need to buy some equipment for that. But uh, don't do too much of that stuff. I prefer the simple things, at least for now. Uh, and OCGN on the move, says Saucy Fredo. Let's take a look at OCGN. OCGN, let's hope it's on the move to the upside. Yeah, wow. Wow. Interesting. A lot of volume kicking in. Let's see. Did anything happen? 925. They announced submission of investigational new drug application with US FDA to initiate phase one and two clinical trials evaluating a gene therapy candidate to treat inherited retinal degeneration. So that sounds very promising. Uh, vision is a big problem for a lot of people. Tesla is dumping at market open, uh, getting very close, getting very close, about $10 off from lows of day, uh, you know, accounting the pre-market. We'll pull up DWAC and see what's going on there. Uh, it looks like DWAC is having a, it's a, just trying to decide if it wants to be bullish or bearish this morning. Uh, it hasn't quite decided. Obviously, we're up 2.67% on the day. AMC tanking. 
Uh, they've got their earnings late today, so we'll see what happens throughout the day. Tesla moving down, uh, getting very close, just a couple bucks away from the lows of day, and OCGN is actually on the way up. Uh, Prabesh, Prabesh Ramdan, how are you? I am good, man. I'm doing great. I had a great weekend and a good night's sleep. Um, and uh, how are you? How are you doing, man? And Michael Shocker says, looking tough. Keep it up. Thanks. I will. Uh, my bro lives in Charlotte. He's been hitting gym hard since they reopened. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. Uh, I think the gym, that's an important thing. You know, a lot of people, uh, especially people like us, if we're sitting on our computers trading a lot of the day, uh, even even just doing any kind of job, a lot of the a lot of the day is spent sitting. So I think it's important to do some kind of workout, uh, you know, even if it's just going outside, going for a run. Uh, if that's all you can find the time for, just find a quick 10 minute run in the day. I think it's important, but I think it's really good to be lifting heavy stuff, lifting heavy weights. So the gym is useful for that. Uh, if you don't want to buy the weights yourself, it's it's pretty affordable, typically, depending on where you go. But let's see what Prague is doing. OCGN is uh, having a bit of a mixed open, right? It can't decide if it's going to be up or down. Uh, but Prague, Prague is having a great open, right? We're moving up, up to 370. Hopefully, we're going to uh, be hitting $4 pretty soon. That's good stuff. Glad to see Prague is on the way, on the rise. Uh, we're down just a couple of bucks on Prague right here. Uh, I ended up entering another position on Prague um, yesterday around 370. So we'll see what happens. Uh, all this volatility. I love it. Day traders dream world today. Ambition says, yeah, yeah. Mondays, I think, you know, Mondays tend to be a little volatile. Uh, a lot of people haven't been trading over the weekend and they're looking for uh, they're looking for some volatility. So ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy a little bit. So we can pull up. We meant to look at SHIB a little bit earlier before the market opened, uh, but we will take a peek at SHIB. SHIB is down a little bit, down over the past 24 hours, 2.69%, and over the past seven days, down 22%. So not the most promising stuff. If you look uh, over the past month, we've been moving down ever so slightly, uh, just kind of continuing this downtrend, not at the all-time lows, but nowhere near the all-time highs. So we're going to see what happens with SHIB. Um, it could be a bad situation, but for crypto in general, Bitcoin, at least earlier today, was very close. It's still very close to all-time highs. If you look at the past month, the all-time highs were 66878 and the highs that we just reached were 66209 so only a $600 difference about uh, in Bitcoin's all-time highs and where they were just earlier today, just a little bit ago. Oh, wow, pre-market 4470 on Lucid. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, Lucid, wow, Lucid pumped up big, up 5% on the Tay. They had a nice bounce pre-market off of 40 and then have just been on a steady uptrend ever since. Now, now we're experiencing a little bit of volatility. We'll see. We're down below 44 again, but uh, still up 4% on the day, so nothing to complain about with Lucid. Uh, great stuff from Lucid, so that's really cool. Lucid is uh, continuing their run, it looks like. They took a little bit of time to consolidate, bounced in between 40 and 34, and uh, now they're, they're breaking past 40 on the way up, it looks like. So we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the day. It could be a crazy day for Lucid. They're, they're experiencing some volatility right now. Tesla's actually rebounding. Tesla stopped crashing, bounced off of 1140, never ended up making the lows of day, uh, still have those in the pre-market, and is moving up on fairly low volume compared to what we saw at open, but that's understandable, right? Opening bell typically gets the most volume, and a lot of people, you know, especially this weekend for Tesla, a lot of people were probably looking to sell their shares as soon as the market opened because of that Elon news, but it's providing a nice buying opportunity for a couple of people. You know, Tesla down 5% over over uh, the weekend. So maybe some people are looking to close the gap, move it back up. We'll see. We'll see what happens. DWAC up 3.53%, having great green bars right here, uh, moving up, making highs of day on a couple of these bars. So DWAC is doing well. And AMC is just struggling, right? It's uh, can't quite decide if it's going to be green or red today. Uh, it's up 1.46% at the moment. So Prague popping early, says Jason Cropper. Yeah, let's let's replace Lucid for a second with Prague. Uh, Prague, yep, back down to 360, but we were hitting 370 up above there at some point. So uh, this is good stuff, though, for Prague. The fact that we didn't just move down below 350, that we actually bumped up above 360, made highs of day. Really good stuff for Prague. I like the movement on that. And uh, OCGN dumped, Saucy Fredo says. OCGN, no. Uh, it didn't eh, it didn't dump, but uh, but it is down 0.49%. So we didn't end up rising as much off of the news that they uh, were investigating a new drug application with the FDA. But, but 
Uh, the fact that we're above 10 is good for OCGN. You know, it might take a couple of days to consolidate here. Who knows? We've already been there for a couple of days. Uh, so by no means are we destined to pump, you know, instantly today or tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. We do have earnings coming out tomorrow morning with OCGN. So maybe they'll maybe that will uh, get us moving in one direction or the other. It might bring people more into uh, reality. It might might mean people start selling the stock a little bit. But uh, we'll see because in the past we have had negative earnings calls. So we'll see this. This could be a good one. But but who knows? Uh, the fact that they are invest. Uh, uh, investigating a new drug and launching an application with the FDA for that is good overall for OCGN. So that's that's good for the long term. You know, that's going to lead to more hype, more pumps in the future, most likely. Tesla moving up, just green bar after green bar. And uh, with OCGN, we'll just have to see if we can stay above 10 until the earnings call. Hopefully we can. That That's most likely going to be a good sign for OCGN. I am hopeful for that one. Um, and AMC just kind of stagnant around market open. It looks like people can't decide, do they think the earnings call is going to be good news or bad news? It's coming out later today for AMC. They're just waiting to see what's going to happen with it. Um, now, I am curious about Bitcoin. It looks like well, we can pull that back up. We are relatively stagnant over the past couple of hours, right? We pumped up from around 63,000 to 65, and that's where we've been since uh, 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. last night, so around 7.30 we got up to 65 and have just kind of been sitting there. We did hit 66 at one point, but now we're back down to 65. So we'll see what happens with uh, Bitcoin. But guns, cats, radios, sundial. Yeah, we can take a peek at sundial. I love sundial, but I don't believe too much is going on with them at the moment. But sundial right here. Uh, so we're up 1.55%. We're still below. You know, with sundial, 70 cents is very important. Uh, you can see the past couple of times that we've tried to get above, we've gotten shot down. Uh, but we do have an earnings call coming out on the 12th. So we're going to have to see what happens. You know, they have bought the alcohol business uh, more recently. So maybe that will start having an impact on their earnings. Uh, it could be good for them, but we'll have to see, right? We've just been in this perpetual downtrend pretty much ever since uh, the big pump up to around four bucks. I think they hit 420. Um, but we've just been in this downtrend for the most part. You know, we've had a couple brief respites from it, but we have just been trending down, making new lows, unfortunately. So we'll see with Sundial. I'm still a big Sundial holder, still hoping that Sundial will pump, uh, but more so waiting for legalization for Sundial, right? That's what I'm hoping on for Sundial. I think that that's when we're really going to see big things coming from Sundial's talk. Uh, and, you know, it's impossible to guess exactly when the government's going to put out uh, the news that, hey, we've decided to start looking into legalization. But uh, I think that's going to, you know, by the time it's announced, the algorithms are going to buy up all this talk and it's going to be too late to get in at that point. And I mean, you could you can get in early, right? You can still get in relatively early. I think that once they announce legalization, we'll be in for a long run, uh, but it's already going to be up pretty massively on the news. So I'd rather just hold the sundial at this point. I'm still up pretty big. I bought it at 19 cents per share. So I'd rather just hold the sundial as it is. Tesla. Tesla's been moving up. We'll see how long they can keep doing that. I mean, uh, the fact that Elon is selling, I'm not sure when he's going to sell. And uh, I wonder how noticeable it's going to be for Tesla stock if we're going to notice literally, uh, you know, big drops in Tesla price. Maybe he sold some already. He may have sold a little bit uh, to keep good with his promise. Uh, so we'll see if, uh, you know, part of this 5% drop was him selling a couple billion. Who knows? It's not guaranteed, but uh, it's not out of the question. He may have sold a little bit. Now, BBIG will pull up just real quick into the bottom left and uh, and show that it is back above $5. So they may be holding the $5 level. That could be a good sign for BBIG. Hopefully they'll hold it. Um, but, you know, I'm not too worried about BBIG until uh, sometime mid-December, probably, just as we get a little bit closer to the tide dividend. That's when I'll start to think more about BBIG stock. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But I think, uh, you know, it's a decent thing, right? They're up 8%. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And Ambition 2020, Neo is hot earnings coming out today. I am playing it a little now, but got to go get my lucid dreams. Neo is a hit or taking quick profit. Now, nice. Yeah, Neo. Uh, I haven't looked at Neo lately, but they're around 40 bucks. Nice. And they've gotten earnings coming out. Let's see. Is that that's the ninth? So tomorrow is their earnings. Let's see. Is that in the morning? It looks like looks like it's uh, let's see. Afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, Neo earnings. So that could be a big uh Big mover for Neo, and Zach Taylor. Biden's approval rating falls to an all-time low of 38. percent Doesn't surprise me. Um, typically, around this point in a presidency, that's when you see the lowest ratings. But uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me after Afghanistan and all that. Uh, people aren't too happy 
with the current administration, at least, uh, especially after the elections, probably. Uh, I, I didn't track the elections too closely, but I think Republicans grabbed uh, Virginia or something like that. I wasn't. I don't watch the elections all that closely, not the smaller ones. I, I watch for president, but uh, the smaller state ones, I, I don't pay too much attention to. Um, but yeah, Bitcoin up 5% over the past 24 hours. And uh, Avalanche token up 13% over the past 24 hours. It could be on the rise, $20 billion market cap. You know, <clears throat> it surprises me every time I see these small cryptos uh, that I, I never seem to have heard of before uh, rising a ton like this, right? I mean, why are they rising is uh, is a good question that I wish, I wish was a bit more clear. It, it almost seems like just hype that raises these cryptos up uh, to fairly large market caps. But Avalanche, the, that kind of thing, never heard of it. Uh, but yet it's right under Shiba Inu market cap wise. So uh, we'll see. Uh, so Prabesh says, what do you say about CRTX? CRTX. Well, let's take a peek at it. We have looked at CRTX, I believe. Uh, let's see. So Cortexime. Yep. So Cortexime. Let's see. Over the past year. Oh, okay. This is the one. Did it just have a, a bad drug thing? Yeah, I think so. They may have just failed a trial. So I say the same thing. Let me make sure. Yeah, healthcare stock, Cortex, I'm sure it's plunged. Let me just look them up on Market Watch real quick to make sure this is what I'm thinking of. Um, but what I'm going to say about them is what I typically say about a lot of these. So yeah, biopharmaceutical company, which engages in the development and commercialization of therapeutics. All right. So what I'm going to say about them is what I say about uh, most of these biotech and pharma plays and healthcare stocks. Uh, when they do dump like this, it's typically on FDA rejecting their drug or, uh, you know, the trial fails, something like that. And uh, typically, I think, well, if that was one of the main things they were working on, then obviously the company's worth a lot less. But what's really going to matter for the future price is if they start working, working on new things, what they announce. Um, obviously, right now, we don't know what they're going to have coming down the pipeline. Maybe the earnings call, uh, you know, alerted some people to something they might be working on because it looks like we started rising uh, on that news, right? That was kind of close to where we bottomed out. We bottomed out the day before and have been on a slight uptrend ever since the earnings call. So uh, maybe they've announced something new. And uh, if they have, then uh, we'll have to wait for the approval for that. But uh, typically, you know, when you get approval, these things pump up huge because that's a huge earner for them. If they have a patent on something, uh, you can really you can really charge quite a bit when you have a patent. So uh, really, it's just going to matter the most for this stock uh, looking forward. I think what they end up announcing drug wise, right? If they have a new hot drug that people are excited about, I think that'll That'll serve to raise the price. But <clears throat> other than that, right, that's what we're mainly looking for with these biopharma plays. So so that that's really what I'd be looking for. But ambition, OK, nice. OK, tomorrow, nice. Hop in Neo to get money before earnings. It will run tomorrow. Yeah, it might. It might run. Uh, typically, you know, stocks are pretty volatile and typically to the upside right before earnings. So that could definitely be a good one. It looks like it's running right now. So people might be getting in, expecting to run tomorrow, buying in right now even. Um, and MMAT says Stephen Orr. We'll take a peek at MMAT. <clears throat> okay, up 3%. Looks like we've got some big green bars right here. Uh, looks like their earnings call is coming out later today. So that might explain why, right? Hopefully that's what we'll see with NEO tomorrow. Um, just some big green bars in the morning. Uh, so yeah, MMAT moving up on earnings expectations. We'll see what happens with it. And Corey Atkinson, what's happening with OCGN? Just tuned in from NZ. So OCGN, uh, looks like we are still above 10. That's what we're hoping for. We've got earnings coming out tomorrow, and we're hoping to just stay above 10 until then, right? You can see that we've been stagnating at 10. That's that's what caught us from this big fall off of our highs of 1880. So hopefully we're going to stay above 10. We caught ourselves a couple of times. Even this morning in pre-market, we bounced off of $10 quite nicely. So Hopefully, we'll continue to do that. We don't want to start trending down right before the earnings call. That wouldn't be great. Uh, the earnings is coming out tomorrow morning. So as long as we can stay up uh, today and as long as we have decent news for earnings, I think that we're pretty solid with OCGN. But obviously, the earnings call could tank us uh, if, if they announce you know bad earnings. Then uh, obviously, that's impossible to predict unless you have insider info. Um, but but their past earnings calls, I will point out, have all been you know negative, right? They've not actually been earning any money. And their most recent one was actually negative by, uh, uh, it was it was more negative than expectations were, right? They were expected to lose about three cents. They lost about 13 cents. <clears throat> However, they did just get the approval for this, uh, 
for their COVID vaccine. So we'll see what happens with OCGN. You know, it could be a good chance on their earnings call for them to highlight uh, some of their successes. So that might happen then. And uh, Don says, most bullish today on Lucid. Lucid looking good. Ambition says, Lucid giving me whiplash. I'm loving Lucid. 4513 seatbelt on, pedal to the metal, all in. <laughs> yeah, Lucid has been doing good. We'll take a peek at Lucid. Again, yeah. Yep, making new highs. New, uh, not all-time highs, but new... Uh, new all-time highs for this most recent pump up. So uh, they've got their earnings coming out pretty soon, the 15th. We're going to have to see what happens with Lucid earnings, but uh, it's earnings season. So all these companies got their earnings coming out. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, which one of them reigns supreme after earnings. You know, Lucid most likely going to have a fairly good earnings call considering that they started delivering their cars uh, in late October, I believe it was. And, uh, and the fact that they're probably taking a bunch of pre-orders for them. So uh, they'll give us the numbers. They'll give us the numbers this earnings call, but we'll see. I'm expecting something good. That should be good for them. So Lucid looking good, says Rocky Mountain Gobblers. Yep, yep. Lucid is is looking incredibly well, up 8% today. Good stuff on Lucid. We'll see how high this can run. I mean, uh, maybe we'll get to all-time highs. You know, the, they got up to 65 just about, and they hadn't even delivered vehicles back then. They didn't have any plans to. Now they're actually delivering vehicles, and... Uh, and people might be realizing, all right, this is what we were waiting for. Let's get into Lucid. They're, they're starting to deliver the, the dream. And uh, it's not a cheap car either. It's $159,000. So uh, expensive car and uh, now an expensive stock. ENVX, says Herbert Fields. We'll take a peek at ENVX. Three do or uh, up 3.24%. Three, and they've got earnings later today. So this afternoon, they've got earnings. Enovix Corp. We'll see what their profile says. Uh, could be, could be interesting. Envx. Uh, I'm not sure. Enovix doesn't reveal too much about what the company does. So, Enovix Corp engages in advanced silicone and lithium <laughs> ion battery development and production. The propri the firm's proprietary 3D cell architecture increases energy density and maintains high life high cycle life. It is also developing its 3D cell technology and production process for the electric vehicle and energy storage markets to help enable utilization of renewable energy. So, okay, this is a battery company, and uh, and let's see what the market cap is on this. $4.2 billion. So, yeah, good battery company, it looks like, uh, and we have been just soaring over the past couple of months, um, just moving up and up and up. But we've got their earnings coming out. It's going to be the first earnings that we have since... Uh, since back in uh, maybe August. So so they were negative last time. We'll see if we can't get a positive earnings call this time. Uh, you know, the stock has been moving up. Maybe that's an indication. Um, maybe that's an indication that they're going to uh, have a decent earnings call. Some, some speculators might be betting on that. They've got it coming out later today. We'll see what ENVX has for us in store. But uh, this is the kind of company that I would almost expect to eventually get bought up by another company like Tesla, an actual, you know, a company making EVs, and then just to kind of consolidate vertical integration. And uh, we'll see. We'll see, though. Um, I, I might expect them to do that, but uh, it's a $4 billion stock, so so we'll see. Um, you know, it's an expensive buy, and uh, maybe Tesla's happy with the battery tech they've already got. So, Michael Shocker, what are you guys going to do with your DWAC winnings once it goes past the moon? Buy a Lucid or a new vacation home, right? They do cost probably around the same. Uh, 150k for a Lucid is expensive. Um, I'd be more likely to buy a Tesla at the moment than a Lucid, but uh, you know I wouldn't mind a Lucid. Um, what am I most bullish on? Mm, tough one. <laughs> um, obviously, over the long term, the long long term, I really like gold and cannabis stocks. I think that cannabis stocks, especially once they uh, once they see legalization in the U.S., that's when they're really going to soar. So very bullish on Tilray, Aurora, Sundial. Over the long, long term, short to midterm, I think DWAC has a lot of potential, especially if we can continue to bounce off of 55 right here. Hopefully, that's what we'll do. Uh, I think that especially if Trump talks about it, if Trump mentions it another time or two, I really think we could start moving up big time with DWAC. I think that's what people are waiting for in terms of a catalyst. They really want Trump to start talking about it. And uh, that really could move us up quite a bit. Um, but also, also Prague, we should mention Prague, because Prague really does of all the short squeeze stocks, Prague is looking the most promising at the moment. Um, also, we haven't looked at Prague options. Uh, we need to look at Prague options and see. Okay, so 29,000 at 3.5 and 32,000 at 4. Uh, we could really see some some squeezes on Prague. So so there are a couple that I'm bullish on. I really like the cannabis talks like Sundial, Tilray, Aurora Cannabis. 
uh, OGI. I also like DWAC over, this is probably more of a midterm stock, right? Who knows when Trump is actually going to talk about it. It might not be any time in the next couple of days or weeks, uh, but over the next month or two, I could really see Trump pumping it up quite a bit, as long as we don't uh, lose a lot of the momentum that we've got, as long as people don't lose interest in DWAC and we don't move down too low. I could see this one being really good as long as we can stay above 55. Uh, and Prague over the very short term, uh, I could see I could see us moving up up quite a bit. So so D Roan says, hey Rob, MSO weed stocks are really the best companies. Um, yeah, so the MSOs, MSOS, I, I think uh, we can pull that up. MSOS. I do own the uh, some of this stock as well, right? I hold some MSOS, and I think these are US cannabis companies. They're actually up about 10%. Uh, so that's good. That's good to see. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing very well, actually, it looks like. I wonder what happened to cause this big spike up in price. Um, okay, New York's new cannabis chief vows that half of legal licenses will go to social justice efforts. Okay, so that happened this morning, but what happened on five? Um, okay, that also, okay, that, that happened on, on 11.5. So, uh, New York's new cannabis chief vows that half of legal licenses will go to social justice efforts. I guess that's pumping up MSOS. Um, interesting stuff. Yeah. MSO means multi-state operator. Yeah, they're the U.S. companies typically. Um, so, yeah, CRLBF, Green Thumb. I'm also interested in PLNHF. I think that's what it is. Plant 13. Yep, that's the one. Plant 13 Holdings. Uh, they're, a, they're a dispensary, but they operate and they have been moving down, but over the past year, they're still up. So, uh, you know, obviously they they peaked with all the cannabis hype, but uh, but they're one that uh, if, if any of you guys watch financial education, that YouTube channel with Jeremy, <laughs> he's he's big on this one. He has he has a great bull case for it, um, and you know he lives near the area. He's visited the dispensary itself, so uh, it's it's actually trading at four twenty right now. So very interesting that we chose to look at it right now. But uh, good stuff for PLNHF. Now it's at four nineteen, back to four twenty. Cool. They're up because Republicans leaked bill for safe banking, which would allow these companies to hit the exchange. Right now, they're over the counter stocks. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Nice. That would be cool. Yeah, and safe banking would be really good just for cannabis in general. <laughs> um, but yeah, MSOS, good good thing I uh, bought in. You know, it has been pointed out to me. I used to talk a lot about Sundial on the channel, and uh, people would point out these to me as well. So I, I did end up buying into them because it did. I think, you know, diversity is important. It does look like... Uh, like, um, you know, I haven't looked too deeply into the fundamentals of these, but uh, stocks like Sundial and Tilray seem to be fairly well developed. It might be tough for these to compete, uh, depending on how big they are. I'm really not sure. I, I just bought into the fund. Um, but, you know, it was at a time when uh, all of cannabis kind of just seemed to be downtrending. So we'll see. I mean, I'm not sure too uh, how well developed they are, but uh, Sundial and Tilray, I know, have decent infrastructures for cannabis, right? They, they already produce quite a bit. Um, so we'll see what happens over the long term if they end up taking some of the market. But, uh, you know, I'm bullish. I'm bullish. Right. I think uh, especially if Republicans are are instigating the bill for safe banking, that's that's very good. Right. Because Democrats will probably be on board with it. Um, so I'm happy about that. Uh, but AMC, it looks like actually took a bit of a tumble. AMC is uh, moving down. We're only up about one percent now. Uh, so not great. Not great on AMC. Tesla still just uh, it rose a little bit and then stagnated still down on the day. I don't expect it will be green on the day. That would be too, too crazy of a move for Tesla to make. I think after Elon announces he's selling 10 percent of the stock, um, I'm still I'm just going to hold my Tesla stock. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm not too worried about Tesla stock falling, but, uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with it. DWAC has been doing great over the past couple of bars, just slowly trending down a little bit, slowly moving down. Um Let's see, Atolis Therapeutics PLC, AUTL up 27%. AUTL, let's see. AUTL, yeah, up 27%. Wow. Good gain on the day. It looks like uh, they just had an earnings call a couple of days ago. Nothing great. No great news there. And uh, Blackstone's auto less bet highlights opportunities in European biotech. Okay. Okay, so... Their shares are trading higher after the company announced Blackstone's Life Science will invest $250 million in the company. Uh, that's that's cool stuff. So that's good. That is good. Um, let's pull up. 
Ambition's asking any other anticipated earnings calls. Let's take a peek real quick and uh, and find the earnings calls that we've got uh, for tomorrow. So let's pull up the earnings calendar and uh, filter this to just give us the good old US of A and uh, apply that right there. So here we go. We've got We'll pull out tomorrow's earnings. So we've got all the earnings. It looks like Coinbase got an earnings call coming up tomorrow. Neo, of course, DoorDash, Palantir. Um, let's see what else. Plug Power, that's one. Uh, not recognizing. Okay, we're uh, Win Resorts. That's another another big one. Uh, if you guys are once again viewers of financial education, you'll know. Um, let's see. We we decided to just do U.S. companies on this. Uh, we could have we could have included the Canadians, but bunch of bunch of companies, ton of companies, um, and maybe we even want to filter it up by market cap just so we can see. So yeah, Coinbase, Neo Dash, Palantir. Uh, those look like the main ones, right? The big ones, and then Plug Power maybe if you're interested in that, um, and Win Resorts as well. So yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple big earnings coming up tomorrow. Uh, but this week, some of the largest, let's see what we've got. So NXC, no, that's sorry, that's probably the smallest. Um, okay, yep, 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 here we go. So on Monday, we'll pull up uh, the largest market cap. So nothing, nothing much on Monday. Um, but if we could scroll down past this massive list, all right, well, there's a lot of companies doing earnings. Here we go, Wednesday, Wednesday. So Tencent is doing it. Well, Disney on Wednesday, okay, Adidas. Adidas as well, Affirm. Uh, yeah, there's there's quite a few companies doing their earnings. And uh, let's pull back up. I think this is Tuesday right here. Let's see what some of the larger market caps are doing. So yeah, it's just, just Coinbase tomorrow. Uh, that's probably going to be an important one to look at. I'm very curious, actually, how they've been performing. Um, let's take a peek at Coinbase. Uh, I do own some Coinbase. Uh, so yeah, they've been doing good ahead of earnings, right? Just Just shooting up over the past couple of weeks. Uh, but they did have a very disappointing IPO, right? They actually tanked on IPO. Uh, you know, a lot of the YouTubers were talking about it around the IPO saying, oh, I hope I'm going to be able to buy it below 400. And uh, then we briefly shot up above 400 and uh, ended up moving down all the way as low as uh, $208. So so uh, obviously it didn't perform as people were expecting, but uh, Deron, they're far more profitable than Canadian weed stocks. I'm most bullish on this sector. Just wait until Amazon delivers weed. Yeah, yeah. When Amazon's delivering, same day delivery, same hour delivery. Uh, that would be very cool. So um, OCGN earnings tomorrow, says so Steve Humes. Yep, yep. And Violet Blue, CHPT looking good. Do you think I should hold for the long run? Uh, we'll take a look at CHPT. Charge point. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Charge point. We know charge point. So let's just see what their market cap currently is. I mean, the way I think about stocks like this, you know, if you're up big, if you've already made like 20%, maybe you sell out just because. Uh, but if you like the company over the long term, I don't like selling stocks. I'd rather buy stocks and uh, just keep putting more money in. Um, <clears throat> I'd rather just keep buying stocks. So, you know, over the long term, it's not a financial recommendation or anything, not financial advice to you, but I personally like holding stocks. So if you like charge points, an $8.7 billion market cap seems a little high. Uh, just because I, I think they are mainly in uh, electric vehicle charging. But let's see. Um, let's see. So charge point, electric vehicle charging network. Okay, so yeah. Um, obviously, you know, that could be a really big industry in the future, especially right now while it's growing. So I think over the next couple of years, that could be great, especially the fact that we just got an infrastructure bill passed. Um, let me pull up the infrastructure bill. And let's see if we can't get a breakdown of it. So, okay, here we go. The infrastructure bill. So, bill is $65 billion for the power grid, not for EV charging, though. Let's see, where is EV? Okay, so $7.5 billion in this chart, in this uh in this infrastructure bill that just got passed, the $1.2 trillion, for those of you who don't know, the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill just got passed, $110 billion for roads and bridges, $66 billion for railroads, $65 billion for the power grid, $65 billion for broadband, $55 billion for water infrastructure, 
$47 billion for cybersecurity and climate change. Interesting that they decided to group those two together. Um, $39 billion for public transit. $25 billion for airports. $21 billion for the environment. So I guess kind of similar to climate change, but a little different. All right. They should. They probably should have grouped together environment and climate change into one instead of cybersecurity and climate change. But so be it. Uh, and $17 billion for ports. $11 billion for safety. Eight billion for Western water infrastructure and seven point five billion, we'll we'll say for electric school buses, and seven point five billion for electric vehicle charging stations. So, very interesting, actually. I've not heard that part about the seven point five billion for electric school buses. It looks like in the future, we'll be uh, riding to school in electric buses. Uh, so that's interesting. So they have an emphasis on bus replacement with low income rural and tribal communities. This funding is expected to allow those communities to convert to zero emission buses. So cool stuff. And uh, what's important here, though, the, what, what actually goes back to ChargePoint is $7.5 billion for electric vehicle charging stations. So literally, in this infrastructure bill, they just gave out the entire market cap of ChargePoint, uh, toward, essentially the whole market cap, right? Mar- uh, ChargePoint has an $8.7 billion market cap, but they just gave out $7.5 billion, not only to ChargePoint, but for electric vehicle charging stations. And that's this infrastructure bill that just passed right this year so who knows what they'll be passing in the future and obviously there's going to be some private vehicle, uh, electric vehicle, vehicle charging stations so charge point is probably in a pretty good industry looking forward over the next uh, couple couple of years maybe the next decade uh, but eventually the problem that i could see arising with charge point is once all of the charging stations are built um, i'm really not sure how profitable they're going to be how much of a margin they're going to be able to charge for electricity i think a lot of people are probably going to charge their vehicles at home. You know, that's an option that you don't have uh, with gas. You can't, you don't just have a gas pump at your house. Uh, but a lot of people are likely uh, to just be charging their vehicles at their homes most of the time. And uh, if you're going on a big trip, then sure, you'll go to the charging station. But uh, I think people will probably very quickly realize the benefit. You know, if they can afford an electric vehicle, they can probably afford an extra, you know, one or two thousand bucks uh, to get an at home charging station. I'm not sure exactly how much they cost, but I don't think. They're that expensive. And Oliver Wells says, what dumped? Clickbait? No, we're talking about Tesla stock, which is down about 4%. Um, Tesla dumped pretty big uh, off of off of Elon's Elon's tweet. But we'll, we'll cover that in just a second. Uh, well, we'll cover it real quick now. And then we'll talk about electric vehicles. You know, Elon has to do with electric vehicles. So we'll talk about him real quick. But he has changed his name on Twitter to Lord Edge. And uh, this weekend, he tweeted out, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance. So I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? And then he put uh, in a response to that, I will abide by the results of this poll, whichever way it goes, and then put in a little joke and, and corrected to say Abiden. So uh, anyways, the results of the poll, most people, 57.9% voted yes, he should te- sell 10% of his Tesla stock. And you can see Tesla is down about Four percent on the day. We were down about five percent at one point, uh, but Tesla has taken a bit of a dump this weekend. So we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, with with Tesla. Obviously, you know we're having some good action today, right? People are buying up the dip. Um, but when when Elon actually starts selling about you know probably twenty billion worth of Tesla, twenty and thirty billion, uh, we'll see. Captain Murica says maybe, but how does that work with an already way overburdened electric power grid? Well, in this infrastructure bill, we are putting forward a hundred. Uh, where was it? Sixty-five billion dollars for the power grid. So it would fund updates to power lines and cables, as well as provide money to prevent hacking of the power grid. And clean energy funding is also included, in addition to the fact that uh, some people might, um, simply because people turn their heat on. Okay, bro. No, let's see. It got cold in February this year, and Texas almost went dark for six months. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I remember the Texas, uh, that, that was a crazy, but uh, yeah, there is a bunch for the power grid um, involved in this, and and uh, it's likely that in the future, you know, Tesla's doing it already, they're starting to give solar panels to a lot of uh, a lot of people's roofs, so uh, it's likely that in addition, you know, to having, you know, the option to charge your car off the grid from your house, you could just have a battery, a battery wall, a power wall, and just uh, charge that up with the solar panels, and then when you want to charge the car, You've already got some energy in the battery, so uh, low cost and, and low emissions, right? To just have solar panels, um, and you know, a good way of the future. It just has a, fry up, a high upfront cost because you have to end up, you know, paying for all of that initially. But over the long term, you save some money on it. So 
I think that people who can afford electric vehicles are probably going to shell out the extra. It's probably going to be less than 10K each to get the to get some solar panels and a battery wall and all that. Um, so, you know, if you're already buying a car for 40K or the Lucid Dream uh, for 159K, you're probably going to shell out the extra money, get the solar panels, do it clean. And take some pressure off the grid. So I, I think, uh, you know, ChargePoint could be doing well while uh, there's all this infrastructure spending going on. But I would be wary of holding them for, you know, a really long time, like 10 years or so. I'd be a little wary of that just because it seems like the kind of thing, the kind of business that is getting hyped up a lot. And a lot of money is getting thrown at it right now. They've obviously done very well. If you look over the past two years, they're up from 10 bucks. They're up to 30 uh, just about. So, you know, ChargePoint over the over the short to midterm doing pretty good. Um, but over the long, long term, I'm not so sure, right? Over the next 10 years, we'll have to see. Maybe they update their business model. Maybe they start providing that kind of stuff, power walls and whatnot. Captain America, right, great points. You're welcome, man. Um, so yeah, charge point, I would consider I would consider buying it now even, right? It's not at all-time highs, and we are getting a bunch of infrastructure spending. Uh, so it could be good. I'm not saying it's going to tank right now. I'm thinking I'm thinking it looks pretty good at the moment, but uh, over the over the longer term, I'm a little wary of those electric vehicle stocks, um, electric vehicle charging stocks at least, right? Because the electric vehicle market itself is only going to be a certain size, and uh, you know Tesla's already uh, taken over. If you look, uh, let's let's see if we can't find a good picture of Tesla's market cap that exemplifies this. So let's see. So this came out. When did this come out? This is actually a while ago. Um, but but it was it was last December of 2020. But we'll we'll still pull it up uh, just because it, it gets the point across, right? Even though Tesla's uh, much larger now, Tesla's market cap has increased by more than 500 billion. Blah blah blah. But the headline: Tesla's market cap top, tops the nine largest automakers combined. And this was back in December of 2020 when Tesla was, let's see what Tesla was back in December of 2020. Um, so this is when Tesla wasn't even past 700, barely past 700, if, 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 if it was that early. Uh, so yeah, before Tesla was even past 700, now it's at 1179. Uh, they were already larger than the uh, top nine largest uh, other automakers combined market cap wise. So uh, that is a worrying part of not just, you know, Tesla's valuation, but I think a lot of EV companies are getting a lot of hype right now. And uh, it makes me worry about it. Well, if these DWAC puts print, I will for sure be buying a Tesla. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um, now I'm curious, are you buying puts or are you selling puts? Sorry, because uh, I sold a put and uh, hope I'm hoping that that prints, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, obviously DWAC, we've got a couple levels of support on it. We've got the 55, we've got the 50. Uh, I'm not opposed to the idea that it, it could tank, right? It could do, it could do poorly. I'm, I'm very open to that possibility. And, uh, my plan if, is if it does do poorly, I'm getting out at 40. Um, but, but we'll see right now we're holding pretty steady. We're up 1.35% on the day. We'll see. Um, life droid. Can you please share BGFV Ortex? We'll pull up the Ortex on BGFV. Pull it up. Big five. Okay, shoot. All right. And uh, let's see. So BGFV. We got it right here. Uh, 49% short interest as a percentage of the free float. So pretty high. High utilization, 99.86%, uh, barely any short squeezing into the last couple of shares available today, up 0.57%. So yeah, it uh, it's uh, it's pretty heavily shorted. <laughs> it's pretty heavily shorted. I'm curious why. I mean, it seems like a decent, uh, I guess sporting goods aren't too popular. Uh, we'll see. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. So um, I don't know. I guess, it's, I guess uh, shorts aren't a huge fan of sporting goods. Um, seems strange, seems strange. Uh, I, I guess, you know, if you looked at their website, it seemed a little, a little, uh, clickbaity, like a little bit of a small company kind of thing. It wasn't as professional maybe as, as some of the other, like if you go look, I'll, I'll pull up, you know, the difference, right? And, uh, big five sporting goods. 
So let's let's pull up the difference between say their site and uh, this is going to be a cheap comparison, but we'll look at Tesla's market uh, website just so that we can glean a little bit of a difference um, between these. So big five, you got right here. You got their their site, and we've got Tesla's site. So big five, uh, it's a little messy. It's a little messy, kind of scammy. Sign up and get ten percent off that kind of stuff. Not not literally scammy. You know, it's a, it's just a way to. Uh, to drive more emails into their email list, but uh, kind of a lot of pop-ups and all that. We did have a pop-up ad the first time we had it here, and then you look at Tesla's site, and it's super nice, um, really easy to navigate. You know, they don't have a bunch of stuff in your face. You just you have the main products right here. There's solar roof, solar panels, Model Y, X, three, and S. Uh, so whatever you want, you click it. It takes you to a new page, and uh, it, it's not not too bad to to look at all their information in order, but. Uh, you know, maybe shorts are just looking at something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, not quite sure why it's so heavily shorted. Uh, so let's see. Uh, they were struggling during pandemic, but now they're doing great. Yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, that seems like the kind of company that would, and of course my camera is off. Uh, of course, of course my camera's, uh, geez, I didn't even get to show you guys the websites, but so be it. Um, all right. So can you please share clove vortex? Because that stock is extremely heavily shorted. We will look at the clove vortex. We will look at clove and see what's going on with them. So 11.69, uh, 11.96% of the free float is shorted. So a decent, a decent amount of shorts, 25 million shares, but almost 26, 25.97 million shares and a short interest change of 0.42%. So yeah, decently shorted. The utilization isn't maxed out. I think that maybe as time has gone on, shorts have been actually, you know, reducing their short positions over time, right? It's slowly been drifting downwards. Shorts have been getting out and uh, slowly closing their short positions on um, on uh, Clove. So so that's good. And uh, life trade, they were struggling during pandemic. Yep. And no debt issues issuing dividends. Yeah. So I think I think that could be a good it could be a good one, actually. So let's see what happened with Lucid. Lucid, people are talking about Lucid. Did it hit 47? Uh, it got very close to 47, 46.77. Uh, so, so wow. DWAC getting whacked again? Yeah, it was. It was. We're, we're fortunately rebounding a little bit, right? Bouncing off of 57, moving up 57.50, it looks like we're at right now. So that's good. That's good to see. Uh, we're holding, holding steady. Um... So yeah, DWAC hopefully will continue uh, with this little bounce. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a V shape today. That would be nice. Tesla is actually doing crazy stuff. It's moving back up. Not what I would have expected. Um, only down 2.46% today. It looks like people are just buying back into Tesla. Uh, people love Elon. People love Tesla. Um, you know, maybe Elon sold all his shares and is buying them back right now. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it would be interesting. He could certainly do it if he wanted to. There'd be no, uh, you know, the downside would be he'd pay some taxes, but uh, good publicity stunt. It would cost him a couple couple billion in taxes, but so be it. Um, what's up with MRIN, short interest? We'll take a peek at that on Ortex. Uh, where have we got? Is it right here? Yep. So we'll take a look at MRIN. Marin Software Incorporated. We'll see what the short interest is like on that. 6.63% short interest, so not that high. But 81% utilization, so a lot of uh, the available shares to be shorted are shorted already. But uh, relatively low short interest, only less than a million shares are being short on MR, MRIN. It's not not the highest, not the highest short interest. So, but that's good, right? You don't want shorts to have a vested interest in pushing a stock that you like down. You'd rather uh, that people be willing to take it up. You'd rather that there be people who, uh, you know, that everyone has a vested interest in the price rising. So it's it's not good, actually, to have a short interest on a long-term play. Uh, obviously, you know, if you're trying to squeeze out shorts, it can lead to a good pump. But if it's a long-term stock, then you don't want a high short interest. So Yar Yar says, bullish on CTRM. The earnings today is very good. Revenue and EPS increasing every quarter. Stock is very undervalued. And I think short interest is very high and shorts are keeping them down. So we can take a, okay, BNB. Who is not sorry? Um, hold on. So I'm not sure who is not sorry. BNB, who is not sorry? I'm not sure. But uh, we will look at CTRM on Ortex and see uh, what the short interest is like. CTRM. OK, 
Caster Maritime. Okay, this is the this is the shipping company. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so not too many shorted shares, but 100% utilization, right? All the available shares to short have been shorted. Uh, there just aren't that many available. Um, so 4% of the free float, 4 million shares, but uh, every, every short they can get in on this on CTR is in on it. So uh, interesting stuff. Interesting to see uh, that shorts are uh, shorts are trying to keep that thing down. So BNB, we'll take a peek. Um, we'll take a peek on Ortex as well as on the chart. We'll take a peek uh, right here. We'll, we'll pull it over Lucid, BNB. Uh, it's uh, not a stock, it looks like. So BNB, maybe it's a token. And D-Roan, Rob, can you check the short interest on MSOS? Absolutely. We'll pull up the chart as well, MSOS. 10% uh, today. I'm curious what this is doing to shorts, actually. So let's see. Okay, it looks like uh, looks like they don't they didn't uh, calculate the f percentage of the free flow, but 2.9 million shares, uh, about half of the available shares to short have been shorted, so 50%. And uh, some shorts are coming in. Obviously, you know the stock's up big today, um, so so some shorts are coming in, pushing it down a little bit. Uh, but overall, not not the highest. So four point uh, four percent more shorts today than yesterday. Uh, so so yeah yeah, it's not not too incredibly heavily short. It looks like let's actually we can do the math ourselves uh, just by seeing the shares outstanding. So two point nine million shorted shares on. Um, let's see how many where what's their float? Where is that? Um, Interesting. Maybe do they not have a float? Where are the stats on this? On uh, average volume is seven hundred something. Interesting. So let's let's pull it up on Market Watch and see if we can't find it there. Uh, Yahoo Finance wasn't doing this any good for MSOS. So um, more like what stock are you least bearish on? Acorn Success. <laughs> yeah. Um, MSOS. Let's see what they've got here. All right. Well, looks okay. So twenty-seven million shares at stand. So let's see. So it's looking like about a ten percent uh, short interest as a percentage of the free flow. Yeah. So about a ten percent. I mean, it's slightly higher. It's like eleven percent, really. So there we go. So not not the highest short interest, but not certainly not the lowest. Uh, decently shorted. You know, all the cannabis stocks unfortunately seem to be uh, decently shorted. Right? People like to push them, push them down. Um, you know, because it's not legal, so it's uh, it's tough to make money in the business right now, especially with the banking the way it is. Uh, but but the Republicans have leaked that bill, so so maybe uh, we'll be getting legal safe banking soon for MSOS and uh, potentially other cannabis stocks as well. That's the hope. So DWAC bullish and Acorn sucks says DWAC may have found a bottom in the mid fifties. Yeah, yeah, DWAC's bottom. If we look, we can see we've got support at fifty five. We've bounced off of it twice now. So uh, hopefully we don't get there again, right? Hopefully this is a higher low on our climb up, but we'll have to see because we have been, uh, we have definitely been uh, downtrending over the past couple of days. You know, ever since we bounced off of 55 the last time, we got up all the way to 70 before bouncing off of that and starting this downtrend, though it looks like we could be turning a new leaf today, starting to move up with DWAC. That's the hope at least. And d -Run, thank you. Uh, thank you again, brother. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Yeah, no, I, I'm hoping MSOS, uh, I'm hoping they do pretty well. I'm holding some. I'm holding some. I like to diversify, though, so I'm holding a couple of the cannabis stocks. But I think I, I think on my M1, I gave a slightly higher weighting to them because I realize that they're the only uh, American cannabis stock that I'm holding. So, uh, you know, I didn't want to be too heavily weighed into Canada. Uh, ILUS, there's a rumor they're going to work with Tesla and any electric vehicle company, and many electric vehicle companies. It's a new high-tech patent fire safety equipment on lithium battery-powered vehicles. That, it sounds good. I know the fires are a bit of an issue for some of the EVs. I know people don't like the idea that uh, they could catch on fire. So uh, ILUS, we'll take a peek at ILUS. Let's see. So we're up 3%. Let's see what the news is on this one. Nothing nothing to report as of the past couple of days, um, at least not, not major enough to report on... Uh, on TD's news, but uh, looks like they have 
update shareholder on its acquisition strategy, deals in NASDAQ, up list plans. Okay, so they're looking to get listed on the NASDAQ. They aren't over the counter stock right now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, I mean, if they could get listed on the NASDAQ, whenever a stock gets listed on the NASDAQ, it's a good thing uh, for the price. It just gives a lot more people access to it. Uh, so always a good thing. Uh, if the more people have access, the more the more buying pressure there is and the higher the price. So so good stuff for ILUS. I'm I'm, uh, I'm not sure what, what they do exactly. It looks like it looks like they work with uh, battery tech and electric vehicles, but uh, but at forty seven cents per share, this could be a cheap one to get in on. Um, let's see, ILUS International, three million dollar market cap, really low market cap stock right here, incredibly low, three point eight eight million dollar market cap, very low. Uh, we'll have to see. I mean that that could be a good one. That well, that one could explode. Um, it looks like a while ago, about a year ago, it was trading at a fraction of a penny. So it already has exploded to some extent, but it's very high now uh, compared to where it was. But, you know, these over-the-counter stocks, very risky. Three million bucks could disappear, uh, you know, if the CEO just just uh, drops or something. You know, it could be bad uh, for this for this one. Uh, but obviously, massive reward uh, if it were to go to any, you know, significant kind of market cap, even just a, a $50 million market cap would be a, a more than 10x on this stock. So uh, cool stuff, cool stuff with with these really micro market cap stocks, they they are very promising, right? Some of them, and uh, if they if they were going to work with Tesla, that would certainly pump their price up a bit. But uh, I don't know if Tesla would deal with such a small company like this. You know, just a three million dollar company, maybe unless, if they've got something new, high tech patent fire safety equipment on lithium batteries. Maybe uh, I'm sure that would help out Tesla if they've got if they've got something that Tesla needs. I'm sure uh, that Tesla would be willing to work with them for that kind of technology, right? If that's uh, if they're really capable of doing it to an efficient extent. So we'll see. We'll see. That definitely could be a big, a big gainer looking forward, though. You know, those micros, uh, they can definitely make a lot of money. Tesla, su surprising us all today. It's not it's not crashing. It's actually having a good day, uh, all things considered, right down about 2.54%. But that's not the, the largest dip it could have taken. Uh, I was really expecting uh, much worse with Tesla. But you never know. I mean, Elon, Elon surprises us all the last time. Uh, Elon tweeted out something about he thinks uh, Tesla's market cap or Tesla's stock is a little bit overvalued. He, he did that a couple years ago. Uh, Tesla proceeded to skyrocket. So uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens with Tesla if it keeps doing what it's been doing. Um, but Sundial up 4%, likely on the news of uh, safe banking. Let's see what Tilray is doing. TLRY up 7%. Yeah, so... Moving up with MSOS. MSOS moving up the most, but these other cannabis stocks are moving up decently, right? Tilray's up about 7.5%. Uh, Sundial's up about 4.5%. So so all these stocks doing decently well. And DWAC, let's pull out the one-minute chart. Looks like we did, fortunately for us, bounce off of 57, but now we're stagnating at 57.40. So I'm hoping that we'll move up. We're still green on the day, up 1.5%. Um, but we'll have to see what happens with us. Uh, over the next couple of hours. The next couple of days is really what we're looking at with DWAC, right? Now that we're very close to 55, we don't want to drop below that. We'd rather keep that as our support and uh, not downtrend to lower supports. That wouldn't be ideal. Um, I'm hoping that we will see a big bounce off of uh, 55, hopefully hopefully sometime this week. Uh, we'll have to see, though. We'll have to see. It would be even more ideal if we didn't bounce off of 55, if we just started moving up now. That would be nice. Uh, Tesla, though, Tesla killing it. We're still rising, down only about 2% at this point. Crazy stuff. Uh, it looks like Elon has a cult following after all. So so good stuff. Good for Elon. The fact that he can uh, say he's going to sell 10% of his stock and that's not going to crash the price. Typically, uh, that would crash a stock. <laughs> Typically, if the, if the CEO and uh, founder was selling his stock, that's when people would start getting out. But Elon did it in such a public way, it looks like... Uh, it looks like people were happy with it. And, you know, he doesn't want the money for anything else. He he lives a pretty minimalist life. We can actually take a look. Uh, I don't know if we can literally find Elon's house, but he lives a pretty minimalist life, I believe. So let's see if we can't find. No, these are all these are all old pictures of Elon's uh, of his wealthy, wealthy, expensive homes. So I am looking, guys. We've got 91 viewers, 88 likes, 
it is most likely possible that we could bump up the likes to 100. It's very possible. We'll have to see if we can do it, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, we can bump up the likes to 100. We only need 12 people liking the stream uh, to bump us up to 100 likes, and we could, uh, we'll see if we can do that. The hope is yes, but we're at 89 already, so we're already climbing. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks, like, it looks like some of these stocks are starting to stagnate a bit, right? AMC has been stagnant all day. They haven't really done that much uh, since having an initial pump in the morning and then uh, a little bit of a move down during the actual trading trading day. Uh, so we'll see what happens with, with the earnings call, right? That's coming out later today. That'll be interesting to watch. We'll see if we can't get AMC pumping up big on the earnings. Hopefully we can. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people would like that. I'm not holding AMC myself at the moment, um, but but we'll see. I know a lot of people would be very appreciative of AMC moving up big. So, uh, okay, we've got some comments. So, uh, Ambition 2020, PPSI is a portfolio for me. It's doing good today. Do you hold this, Rob? PPSI, I do not believe I hold PPSI. Pioneer Power Solutions, Inc. So, up 100%. That's amazing. Um, that's really good stuff. They've got an earnings call coming up, of course, as all companies do, but let's see what happened. So they launched, uh, they announced the launch of its eBoost portfolio of mobile electric vehicle charging solutions for a full range of applications. Nice. They, they might be trying to get in on, um, on, uh, some of that infrastructure bill spending. They might be trying to get a contract. So, uh, up from three third, three twenty two. Uh, all the way to 677. That's what we're trading right now. So that's good stuff. And d good job, Rob. You're a good guy. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I do my best. I try to be a good guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I don't hold PPSI. I wish I did. Now it's up 100%. I don't know if I'll buy into uh, something that just spiked 100%, but uh, we'll see. Let's see what the earning or what the uh, market cap is on it. The, the earnings call might be a bit of a downer, unfortunately. Uh, since they just pumped 100% on anticipatory news, right? The fact that they're uh, launching some EV stuff, uh, some some EV charging stations. It looks like they probably won't have many much revenue from that uh, by the time their next earnings call comes out. Uh, that could bring some reality back to the stock. Maybe it'll move down a little bit on uh, you know relatively similar earnings to what they've had in the past. But we'll see. Not a guarantee. They might they might keep doing good. And their low market cap, which I love, 58 million dollar market cap, almost 50, almost 60. Getting very close to $60 million market cap. Um, Don says, Rob, can you please do a power hour 2DY in light of the earnings? 2DY? What, what, uh, specify what 2DY is. You mean um, like, a, like a power hour live stream during uh, after hours? Is that what you mean? Um, can you please do a power hour 2 day? In light of the year. Oh, like uh like do power hour two days in a row? Like uh that might be what you mean. Um maybe we might we might we might cover some of the earnings calls. We might do that. I've not done uh power hour live streams. Typically though, typically my day ends at uh at four. Typically it ends at four. So maybe if we were just doing power, I might. Um might. I, I might do it. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. So AMC. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I might. I'll think about it today. I'll, th I'll see what other work I can get done today. And uh, typically the day ends at four and that's when I hit the gym. But uh, maybe we'll push it back a little bit. Maybe we will. If, if enough people are interested. I don't know if people would know uh, to log on to the stream because I think as of right now, people, you know, expect at nine o'clock to show up. Um, two, oh, two day, two DY is two day. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know any slang, man. Um <laughs> So yeah, can you do a power hour today in light of the earnings call? Yeah, we might do an earnings. Maybe. I'll, I'll consider it. Power hour only from 3 to 4. Uh, maybe 4.30 we could do. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. No promises, but I'll, I'll try to do it. So Jason Cropper says, AMC News just dropped AMC to team with Disney on surprise screenings. Nice. That's cool. So yeah, 1017. AMC teams with Disney on surprise screenings in conjunction with Disney Plus Day. That's cool. So for a series of surprise screens of Disney titles at more than 200 of AMC's U.S. venues. Nice. So that's cool. So I'm guessing it's just going to be old school uh, movies. So, OK, one film from each of the companies, Walt Disney's Animation Studios, Pixar Animation Studios, Walt Disney Studios and Lucasfilm Divisions will play with a Disney short once per day on November 12th, 13th and 14th. The films will not be announced in advance and moviegoers will pay five dollars per screening. 
Okay, that's cool. So as part of this offer, moviegoers will also receive an exclusive double-sided Disney Plus poster at the theater and an AMC concession offer for a $5 cameo combo. Okay, cool stuff. So uh, that's good for AMC. That's that's really good for AMC. And uh, honestly, not bad for Disney as well. You know, Disney um, could surely benefit from some of the apes moving over to Disney if, uh, if they show that they're showing support for AMC. Uh, can't be a bad thing for Disney either. Um, so, you know, these companies got to stick together. AMC is surely glad to be working with Disney and uh, Disney's probably glad to be working with AMC as well. That's a really cool, really cool combo that they've set up. Nice. Nice for them. Good for AMC. Um, you know, obviously that won't factor into the earnings that happen later today, but we'll have to see uh, what goes on with it. Um, uh, cause that's what the 12th, 13th and 14th. I think they said they were doing that. You know, that sounds like a fun thing almost. I, I, I wonder if there's an AMC near me, uh, maybe might be worth going to that. That could be fun. I'll see if, uh, my friends are interested in that. Yeah. Might do it. Might do it. Uh, cause five bucks. That's cheap. That's cheap for a movie. Not that we can't see You know, we have Disney plus so we could watch a Disney movie whenever we want, but, uh, but it, it is cool just to go to the theater every now and then just did that for Dune. Actually first time back in the theater was for Dune. Um, I hadn't been in the theater since the pandemic hit, uh, but, you know, ended up watching Dune in the theater, even though I found out after the fact Dune is available to stream on HBO Plus, so, uh, or just HBO Max, or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, a bit of a waste there, but whatever. I have actually been curious to go back to the theater. I would like to see The Last Duel. I don't know if any of you guys are, uh, you know, interested in history and whatnot, but The Last Duel seemed like an interesting historical, uh, medieval, mi- typically medieval stuff is what I'm into. Uh, a lot of the time, if it's historical, I prefer medieval, but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll, maybe I'll hit the theater up some uh, some other times for, with AMC. I'll try to go to AMC. I've got one real close to my house, so I haven't bothered uh, uh, branching out from that theater and uh, looking for an AMC. But I think, actually, now that I have, I will point this out for those of you who haven't been following the streams lately. Uh, and it's going to change. Okay, here we go. So M1. No, that's not what we want. We don't want Reddit. We want... Uh, we want to pull up this credit card. Speaking of AMC, if you guys like AMC stock, uh, you'll probably like this credit card, the M1 Owner's Rewards uh, credit card. So if you if you have an M1 account, an M1 finance account, uh, and uh, there's not a list, unfortunately, there's not a link, unfortunately, in the description that you can use to get your uh, referral to M1. And I, sh- I should include that, um, and I might, I might put that back in, but. Uh, if you open up an M1 account, you can get this credit card, right? And the point of this credit card is that they give you cash back based off of the stocks that you own. So if you own a share of any of these companies right here, then you get 10% cash back and they have a list of stocks. And uh, one of the stocks is Adobe. One is AMC though. So you get 10% back at AMC for using this card at AMC Theater. So decent deal, right? 10% is a significant amount. That's almost like a coupon. Uh, so just using your card at, you know, GameStop, Netflix, Spotify, Tesla, uh, Lululemon, Dropbox, Chewy, AMC, Adobe, you get 10% cash back using this card if you own some other stock. And there's other places you get 5% cash back like Chipotle, Dollar General, Starbucks, some airlines like American and Southwest, JetBlue, TJ Maxx, all kinds of stuff. 2.5% cash back on a bunch of other categories like Lowe's, Costco, Twitch, Apple. Amazon, and then 1.5% cash back on everything else. So that's the M1 Owner's Rewards card. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, they are a card that I just got and that I like quite a bit. It's a metal card. It's cool stuff. Uh, so if you guys were looking for a credit card, then that might be something you're interested in. So Rosa Pin says, how is OCGN looking for earnings coming up? Um, well, earnings are potentially going to make or break uh, OCGN stock, because if you look, OCGN is, ooh, ooh, we haven't looked at them in a couple minutes, but they just broke through $10. That's not great. That's not great. They're not quite, maybe they are at the uh, all-time lows of this dump. They're, they they did actually, it looks like they made some all-time lows of this dump, so they may be on the way down again. That's not great. Uh, so now we're looking to earnings to potentially save us from another dump. We'll have to see, um, but you know, in the past, if you look at their past earnings, they haven't been amazing, right? They, they've been negative. They, they missed pretty big on their last earnings. They were expected to lose three cents per share and they lost 13. So we'll have to see what happens on this earnings. But, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it will be a positive one. Um, but you can't be too sure with this, right? Unless you have insider info, you're never going to know which way the earnings are going to lean until they actually get announced. But 
Uh, as it stands right now, it's not looking great for OCGN, right down 6.5% on the day, uh, breaking through that $10 support that we had formed so nicely. Obviously, this is very close. You know, we'd been down this low before. If we form a nice V, that would actually be very, very good for us, but but we'll see. And Mart, Martin Kong Oswald, we'll look at METX. We will look at METX. So, Met and Holding. So, yeah, this one's up 14%. Looking good, um, and we were looking at this earlier. We'll pull up the Ortex for it uh, and see what the shorts are doing to Met and Holding Group. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was, a uh, yeah, okay, here we go. 16% of the free float has been shorted on METX, and a decent part of the available shorted shares, the available shares to short have been shorted, 95% of them. So 95% utilization, we're up 5.73% short interest-wise today alone. Uh, you know, shorts are obviously looking at this as an opportunity uh, to make some money. The fact that we did pump up 12% uh, on the day. So so I think that uh, METX, you know, looking over the looking over the long term, uh, it's tough to say what they'll do. I mean, they have been tanking pretty hard over the past while. Um, maybe this will be the turnaround point for them, though. Who knows? But, uh, you know, I tend to not like buying into these downtrending stocks. Uh, and, you know, hoping to catch the bottom. I mean, the fact now is it look it, it looks a little bit more promising, right? The fact that we're not literally downtrending, but you can always get crushed. Uh, you know, who knows if they'll do some kind of offering, if they'll uh, if they'll just tank off of bad news. You never know what happens with these kinds of things. It looks like they've had a couple of rallies in the past. Uh, I don't know if this is the one that's going to start taking us up on an uptrend over the long term. We'll have to see with it, though. Um, I mean, so... How's DWAC doing in your opinion? DWAC is doing all right above 55, right? I like DWAC above 55. We have bounced off of that level twice. Hopefully we don't bounce off of it uh, a third time. Hopefully we just start moving up. I, I would rather not see us even touch 55. I'd rather just see us start moving up, but you can see we've bounced off of it twice. And uh, we're getting very close today, right? We got very close in pre-market. We're up a little bit on the day though. So uh, hopefully this is just going to turn into a little uptrend. It could be the beginnings of one, right? We're starting to move up. It wouldn't surprise me if we see some uh, another couple of green bars moving up. That would be great to see uh, this thing turning into an uptrend, maybe close the day around 59. Um, but really what we're waiting for with DWAC is for Trump to speak on it. So that's what we're waiting for. And uh, should I keep or sell? I can't really advise you on that if you're up. I mean, maybe you want to take a little profit, but um, that's up to you, man. I, I can't advise you one way or the other to keep or sell. I'm, I'm holding mine still. I'll say that. I'm holding mine. So Rob, Cesar, let's cover... Clove, ER today, and on the squeeze list. Thanks. Yeah, we'll look at Clove. We'll look at Clove. And uh, AK-47 Edger, we will look at FAMI in just a second. I, I do like FAMI a lot. So um, with Clove, though, it looks like the earnings are, is that I think we looked at it, and it is later today. Yep, earnings later today on FAMI, or on Clove. Sorry about that. FAMI's on my mind. But uh, it looks like 8 might be acting as a little bit of resistance for us right now. Uh, obviously, you know, we've talked about this in the past. And uh, we were hopeful that we would move up towards eight. Uh, so now the trouble will be getting over eight and starting to use it as support, right? That's what we're hoping for. You can see that we've played around at $8 a lot in the past. Um, hopefully this earnings call will be, I mean, it's I don't expect it to be a, a positive earnings call in the sense that they made revenue but or that they made money. But um, we'll see what what happens with Clove on the earnings call. Obviously, we can't, we can't predict what it's going to be, uh, how people are going to react to it, though. Um, you know, I think everyone knows it's probably not going to be positive numbers. We're probably going to be losing money still on Clove. They're they're still uh, relatively early in their life cycle, um, but but they could they could do decently. Um, they could do decently on the earnings uh, news, right? If they have, if they have something great to say, if they highlight a success or something, it could be good. So AK forty seven. My opinions on Fami. We will look at Fami. Um, I like Fami. I think that. Uh, you know, when they when they expanded their business right around here, we actually saw them expand their business model right around here into the health and wellness space. They found some new strategic partners when they were doing this initial pump up. Right. This is this is what happened about a month ago. They found some strategic partners to help with their supply chain and they uh, purchased. They acquired a forestry company. So they're really doing good stuff fundamentally. And I think that that will start to be reflected in the stock price. Um, Fami, you know, was was doing a. Uh, was doing decently in the past, right? It looks like they had some stock offerings and uh, that ended up pushing them down a little bit. But uh, it looks like they've used that capital to actually improve the company. So 
it's not like the executives were just doing stock offerings and paying themselves a, a huge salary and then doing more stock offerings and uh, and just run into the bank. I think that they'll be doing decently over the next uh, next couple months. I think that Fami will be moving up in a fundamental way uh, over the long term because it looks like they really were improving the company fundamentally. So uh, let's see. Lucid coming down. It was a good run. I'm sure there will be more Lucid Dreams tomorrow. Yeah, let's take a peek at Lucid and just see what happens. So yeah, down to 43, still up 4% on the day. Uh, so not not bad at all for Lucid. Uh, kind of the opposite of Tesla, right? Instead of uh, having a big dip and uh, moving up throughout the day, it looks like Lucid had a bit of a pump. And then, uh, well, now we're moving down a little bit, but not not even to lows of the trading day. So, so Lucid's still doing good. Um Stock Raider. What's up, Rob? Hope everyone is doing well this morning. I hope so, too. I hope you're doing well, man. And Manoj Mohan. Rob, boy, what about METX? Well, we were just looking at METX. I guess a lot of people are interested in this one. Um, what I was saying about it is that I'm not the biggest fan of buying into a downtrend like this. Granted, it looks like we're starting an uptrend now. So if there ever was a time, it is on these uptrends, right? You just want to be very careful and protect your downside. You don't want to get caught uh, in like a 50% uh, price drop. You'd rather get out maybe if it starts dropping 10, 20 percent. Uh, maybe that's kind of large even. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. It's just what I would probably probably be looking to do if I was playing METX. Um, but you know they've got their earnings coming up on the 17th, so we'll see what happens with them. But uh, I do I try to avoid these big downtrenders that are just moving down unless there's a really compelling case being made for why I should get in. Um, so let's see. Uh, Ambition says, I sometimes buy low to get your average down when you're at a loss if you're in for the long haul. Or, yeah, yeah, I think that averaging down makes a lot of sense. And Joseph Agnello likes FAMI a lot as a couple of dollars coming out of their mouth. Uh, Rob Cesar, thank you. What about AUPH? BO rumors everywhere. Pinned at 31.32 for weeks. AUPH. We'll take a peek. Arena Pharmaceuticals. Okay. So yeah, they have been stuck around 31, 32 for the past while, it looks like. So uh, yeah, their earnings came out and hardly moved them, it looks like. So uh, that's interesting. You know, it may be, um, we can actually potentially figure out what's going on with them. It looks like they spiked up a ton. And I am curious what their options look like. Uh, are there no options for them? No, there are options. There are options, I think. Yeah, here we go. So AUPH, um, let's see if if they, yeah, so, okay, okay. So they have sold quite a few $35 call options, or 30, uh, yeah, $35 call options. They've sold about 20,000 of those. They have 20,000 open interest, $35 call options, very high implied volatility due to the recent massive spike up in price. Now, it may be that institutions are trying to play a little bit of a game here and uh, hold a lot of... I mean, pretty much all of these put options are out of the money, right? So they've sold all of these open interest put options. Institutions might be trying to hold them down. Uh, we'll hold them, you know, above 30 because that's when we start seeing some big uh, open interest on put options. But also these 20,000 call options at 35, uh, they might be playing a little bit of a game here trying to hold us in between uh, 30 and 35. The highest we were able to get is 33.97. So, uh, you know, even off of earnings, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe there's a little little game being played with the options. Maybe some institutions are trying to collect the premium. Um, but let's see. Uh, let's see. Who was next? Stock Raider. AQST, when you get the chance, bro, thanks for commenting back to me, too. Sure thing, man. Um, I, try to, I try to get to the comments there just a lot sometimes, and uh, YouTube doesn't really tell you about every comment. It uh, just has, like, a, a big pool of all the comments, and a lot of them are actually spam. A lot of them are bots. A surprising amount are bots. So... Um, you know, you'll recognize the bots when you see them and I try to remove the bots, but, uh, but it does kind of drown out some of the real comments. So, so AQST, let's see, their earnings just came out. Then you said they were good. Yep. Um, now I will pull up the short interest. I'll just briefly look at AQST. I might have to make a full video on them, but, uh, a lot of people really have been requesting AQST. Uh, let's see. So 3.22% of the short interest of the free float is shorted only 1.22 million shares. So not the highest short interest, not the highest, though, a decent portion of the utilization. So, uh, of the available shares to short, a lot of them have been shorted, but 
um, not that large of a percentage of the free float. So let's see. Let's see on Yahoo what their market cap's all about. So $236 million market cap, all right. And um, 40 million shares outstanding. So not the most heavily shorted. The float on AQST is tiny. Yeah, yeah, about a 40 million share float. So we can, or, or the float actually. Let's, yeah, the float, 37.89 million. Yeah, so 37 million and then... Um, 1.22 million short interest. So it's not the most heavily shorted. It's not the most heavily shorted. So uh, I will say, though, that it is obviously uptrending currently, right? And doesn't surprise me, it has been getting a lot of hype, uh, at least from what it seems in the comment section. A lot of people have been talking about it. Um, a lot of people have been requesting it. So it must be doing something right. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm checking Reddit to see if uh, it's being discussed. But no, it doesn't seem to be on the top 100 on Reddit, but Tesla is uh, definitely getting a lot of a lot of talk on Reddit. A lot of people on Reddit are talking about Tesla dropping. Um, so, so yeah, AQST, it's, it's an interesting one. I've definitely heard a lot of people talk about it, but I've just not quite been able to. I've looked at it once or twice, but I've not quite been able to figure out why exactly it's pumping up. Um, obviously, you know, their earnings, they did beat. They they were estimated to lose 40 cents per share, and they lost 37. Um Oh, the FDA, FDA date in December. Okay, that explains it. That explains it then. Um, then yeah, that that could be very good, right? If they if they end up getting that, if the FDA ends up approving whatever it is, um, let's see the news. Yeah, so if the FDA ends up approving, looks like they reach stage two. Yeah, if they end up approving it, that's always a really good thing. You know, stocks always pump huge when the FDA approves something because then you have a patent and and uh, patents are very profitable. Um, so yeah, AQST could be doing good looking forward. It could, uh, although there's always the chance, always the chance that it will uh, dump if if uh, if they don't get approval for whatever it is that they're that they're looking into. So um, let's see, Clove. I think they got earnings. Says OX Ben J. Yeah, they got earnings coming out later today. And uh, Daniel Brigo P H U N. Yeah, we haven't looked at P H U N. I'm actually curious. Uh, it's at, it's stagnant today. It's up zero percent and down zero percent. Up to, up point two four percent. There we go. So there we go. Um, looked at the five dollar November nineteenth call, but didn't bite. It says risky seeds on what? On what? I'm curious. Probably the five dollar call. Oh, on PHUN perhaps. Yep. Um, yeah, the PHUN. Uh, PHUN. The options options are very risky. Uh, you can definitely lose a lot of value. Let's take a look at PHU and options. So November 19th at $5. Uh, 50 cents, so it's not the highest premium, but it's not the lowest. Still a decently sized premium. Little AR15 glockalized. All this hype of the earnings market uh, still sucks today. Shaking my head, yeah. Yep, the 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 earnings haven't been as uh, exciting as we were hoping for, but um, let me pull up, actually. Let me pull up. The markets, just so people can see, here are the markets right here. You can see that uh, there's there's been relatively little movement, right? Kind of stagnant. It depends on what sector you're in. Utilities are down. Consumer defense is down. Restaurants and footwear are down. Consumer cyclical are mixed, right? Tesla's uh, Tesla's down, making it look like uh, look like a pretty bad day. That Tesla's actually one of the reddest stocks today. Um, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, not moving too much, right? All all less than one percent changes. Financials are doing great though. Financials, banks, uh, so so yeah, the financials are doing good, but the markets haven't moved all that much. So Prog Ortex, Tim Blackburn requests. We will take a peek at Prog Ortex. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what they've got. Uh, it looks like even more shorts are coming in today. Last we checked, it was at uh, around three percent. Now it's at five point nine four percent. Thirty seven percent of the free float is shorted on Prog. Twenty four million shares. Uh, still a relatively high utilization of 90, 96.51%. So not too many shares left to short, but shorts are using them uh, quite a bit. So let's see the prog chart, actually. It looks like we had some interesting action bounce between 350 and 360 today. Uh, still up 1.7% on the day, so not bad. And NVIDIA doing good, says Vivi. So let's take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA. And... Uh, Let's see what happened with NVIDIA. So yeah, up 3%. You know, I, I have a friend who works at NVIDIA, 
and uh, just started working there not too long ago. Got a nice package, a um, uh, decent amount of stock he got. So he's probably very happy about this. He, he started a couple months ago, but um, now it's now it's up huge. You know, he's, he's, he's made 50% on that stock already. So he's probably really happy. Could you please tell me when will Tess, when will be Tesla earnings? So Tesla earnings, let's pull this out and see when their earnings call is. So Tesla just had an earnings call not long ago on October 20th, and Tesla's next earnings call is on January 26th, just about. So October 20th is uh, is when their last earnings call was. So they actually, they had them a little bit earlier than a lot of these other companies. Ambition 2020, why do folks like this kind? It's doing well. Uh, like kind bar or next door holdings, which uh, kind the ticker Kind bar, I've, I've, I don't know, I can't say I've heard of kind, um, unless it's the bar, like the snack bar, like this. <laughs> um, let's see if we can't find a nice picture of it. Like if it's this kind of a thing, then I've heard of kind right here, the kind bar. Uh, it's uh, five grams of sugar, six grams of protein. It looks like just a healthy bar. Um, I've considered it, but... I've considered getting them, but I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the ones that are completely not. kind ticker next door. Yeah, that's what we've got on the chart right here. That's what I was thinking. So uh, it's up 37%. looks like, did it just IPO? Might have just IPO'd uh, or at least gotten listed. So let's see. Let's see what it's all about. Kind next door. Kind IPO today. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Next door holdings. Let's see what they are all about. Um, kind, it looks like. Oh, you're probably involved in real estate, but hold on. Let's see what they're all about. Um, on the Wall Street Journal, maybe that'll have something for us. Okay, so free social networking app aimed to connect local neighborhoods began life as a public company. Okay, so that's interesting. Free social networking app aimed to connect local neighborhoods. That's cool. That's cool, and that makes sense. Kind is a good ticker for them then, and Nextdoor uh, makes a lot of sense for the company name. So let's see, Nextdoor. Nextdoor.com, we can pull up their site right here. Tap into your neighborhood, enter your address to sign up, and then you can enter it. And it's where communities come together to greet new to greet newcomers, exchange recommendations, and read the latest local news, where neighbors support local businesses and get updates from public agencies, where neighbors borrow tools and sell couches. It's how to get the most out of everything nearby. Welcome, neighbors. So, okay, that's kind of cool, right? Um, so I, it looks like they're going to, you know, you put in your address, and then they kind of filter it out so that you only see uh, local people and people who are near you. So it's kind of like maybe Instagram relevant news and information from neighborhoods, business and public agencies in real time. So it's it's uh, likely just like an Instagram, but for only people around you. Now, the downside to that kind of thing is, uh, you know, you could have a couple million users. Uh, but if you don't have people in your area, even if a ton of people use the service and you're the first person in your area to get it, it's basically a useless app because, uh, you know, there's no one around you posting, so there's nothing to do. <laughs> uh, so that is the downside with that kind of thing, though. It is It would be cool if everyone had it and uh, maybe people would be interested in using it. I, I might. I might be interested in using it. We'll see. I don't know what good they are, what, what they're used for, but um, it seems like I might look into it later, maybe. Uh, so sorry, my comments split up. I heard BBIG was doing some kind of spinoff, but couldn't find it. So I checked five dollar call one. Oh, when it was big close by. Okay, yeah. So the so BBIG, yeah. We've talked about that. BBIG, they are doing a Thai dividend spinoff, and uh, that is that is happening sometime around December twenty seventh. Is what they've said as of late, right? That's it was supposed to happen uh, October twenty seventh or something, uh, maybe October twenty second. So, but basically. They delayed the dividend uh, last time, and that actually caused a huge dip in price. Moved it down from around eight dollars to five dollars. So uh, I'm expecting that it could be moving up come December 27th, right when people are expecting this dividend to come out as people get back into it. Um, but yeah, the five dollar calls. Let's see what those trade for on BBIG. Let's see. So there's quite a few calls on BBIG available, right? Quite a few calls. Yeah, fourteen thousand. 
Uh, they're not the not the cheapest calls, thirty seven and thirty nine cents bid and ask, um, but but they're not the most expensive either. They're not not maybe not what I would do, um, because November nineteenth is relatively close to now. Now the, the dividend isn't coming out until the twenty seventh, so of December. So it, it's 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 a ways away. I don't know if I would be getting into call options right now. If I held BBIG, I might consider selling November nineteenth call options, uh, in expectation that you know I can make some money now off the premiums. And uh, potentially, you know, even if it does move up to five, uh, I'd be willing to sell, right? If uh, if I bought right now at 480, um, then that could be a decent profit right there. But I'd be more so looking to uh, hopefully, you know, it wouldn't move above five if I bought right now and sold the $5 calls. And then come the uh, actual tied dividend, it could potentially spike up as well uh, and make some money off the stock as well as making some money off the premium from selling the options. So it could be a good strategy, but not financial advice to anyone. So Vivi Ruddick, Nikola. Nikola, I remember when that IPO'd, it did pretty good, and then it tanked, and now it looks like we might be back up on the rise, might be moving back up, bounce off of 10, good stuff, good stuff, yep, so Nikola, doing decently right now, it looks like we're moving up, and uh, had an earnings call that spiked us up uh, very temporarily, so, hi Rob, says Steve Gentile, any thoughts on HCMC, it's been flat for a long time, HCMC, Healthier Choices Management Corp., yeah, a fraction of a cent. Jeez. Jeez. Um, so let's see. How big was this drop right here? It's tough. It's tough when these things are fractions of a cent. Um, let's pull this chart down a little bit. But here we go. So it lost about 92% of its value. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. This, this looks like a really micro market cap stock. We'll take a peek at the market cap and see what it's at. But but we'll see. HCMC, Healthier Choices Management. I like the name of the company. $180 million market cap. Why is the stock so cheap? It's just a fraction of a fraction of a cent. Weird stuff, weird stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like they're going to have to do a big reverse stock. Spl- oh, well, they're an OTC. They're an over-the-counter. Okay, okay. Uh, well, then never mind. I don't have to worry about re- reverse stock splits as much, right? If they were... Uh, on the Nasdaq, then you'd have to worry about it a decent amount, but it's that's uh, you know maybe they'll do good. I don't know. <laughs> this one's tough to say. Like uh, I've never heard of this company, but uh, they they could do decently. Um, but you know they they're obviously they've been stagnant for a bit. Uh, still a fairly large market cap though, so obviously people still believe in them uh, to some extent. But um, I'm not sure what business they're in. Uh, really healthier choice management HCMC. Let's see if we can't figure it out. Maybe maybe they're gonna be doing good, but uh, holding company focuses on providing consumers with healthier daily choices with respect to nutrition and other lifestyle alternatives. Operates through the following segments: grocery and vapor. Grocery segment offers fresh produce, bulk food and vitamins and supplements, packaged groceries, meat and seafood, deli baked goods, dairy products, frozen food, health and beauty products, and natural household items. The vapor segment provides e-liquids, vaporizers, and related products. So sounds like they're in a bit of everything. They're selling you everything. Um, they might be a little bit too broad for, for me. Uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes stocks like this end up not doing very well. If the management's spreading themselves very thin, uh, they might just not have the resource to really pursue all of those to an extent that people are happy with their products. Uh, so, so that's a tough one. I don't know. I mean... And Anil Kaptor, will OCGN go up? I'll get to that question, man. We're going through the comments in order. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, though. Um, so, space. I have anything. Okay, well, yeah, we looked at spec- at, uh, at Nikola and SPCE. Uh, we've talked about those on the channel before. Um, yeah, <laughs> HCMC, my thoughts, Rob, good time to say here. That's unfortunate. Jeez, 90, yeah, 90% loss. That it is, I will say, it is unfortunate. And Anil, we will get to OCGN. Don't you worry, don't you worry. Uh, Hijak Yoon, Uber, how about the, How about this? So what about Uber? We'll look at Uber. <laughs> um, haven't looked at Uber in a bit. But Anil, enough of this. <laughs> enough, um, enough talking about OCGN. We, we will look at it, I promise you. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Uber over the past year, uh, has been, you know, it's what you expect from Uber, right? They're taking over a lot of the, the ride sharing industry. They've already done it, uh, still losing money. It looks like had a, had a bad, bad earnings call, 
Um, lost a ton of money compared to what they were expected to lose, but it didn't seem to affect their stock price that much, right? They were expected to lose 37 cents per share and they lost a buck 28. Um, so, you know, uh, they're, they're doing decently. They were expanding. You know, I, I looked into them a bit, um, uh, a while ago and, and they've expanded into a couple of businesses, right? They're in electric scooters. They're starting to do medical deliveries for pharmacies and all that. Um, so they are expanding, but it's going to be tough to really become profitable. I, I don't know if people are willing to pay that much for these rides. Uh, so it'll be tough to say with Uber what's going to happen with them. But uh, it, it, it's tough to say. It's tough to say. I'm not quite sure if Uber is going to go uh, up or down, if they're overvalued or undervalued. I'm not buying them just because they do seem a little overvalued to me. They're losing money right now. And I just can't imagine that uh, they start making a ton all of a sudden if they just raise their prices, right? If they're losing money at the moment. Um, you know, the, the, granted, they're getting into a lot of industries, they're still growing, but uh, we'll see how they end up getting profitable, right? I think that people, for the most part, have their own cars, and uh, don't need Ubers that often. I mean, every now and then I might need an Uber, but they've just gotten as of late, especially very expensive. So uh, maybe, maybe if, um, if there's a big inflow of drivers, if a bunch of people all of a sudden want to start driving for Uber, they could start doing well, but I'm, I'm a little wary of them. I'm, I haven't gotten into Uber. Uh, for that reason, I've not bought an Ubers lately or bought the stock. So uh, a little wary of Uber. It's almost a $100 billion market cap at the moment. So uh, obviously, you know, they could continue rising. But over the past uh, two, three years, they haven't been doing all that much. So so we will finally, um, Ricky C, Risky Seeds, after this, we'll look at OCGN. So next door app downside is that people use it to report suspicious people, led to several people getting their neighbors or color jammed up by police. As they were misidentified as prowlers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a downside. Um, is that you can use it to report suspicious people. Yeah, I don't like that feature of the app, that you just use it to rat on your neighbors for doing weird stuff. Seems strange. I mean, it seems like you could rat on your neighbors regardless. Just call the police. But um, maybe maybe they rat them out for stuff they're doing on the app. I don't know. Uh, so Anil Kapoor. Anil Kaptor, OCGN. We'll take a peek at OCGN, but we we covered it a little bit earlier. So wh what's going on with OCGN is they did, unfortunately, just break down through their $10 support. Uh, so not, not ideal for OCGN. Um, and they've got their earnings call coming out tomorrow morning, so maybe that could save us. That's what we're really looking for to save us. Uh, if we could, you know, potentially we have been down this low before over the past couple of days. We could always bounce back. It looks like we're seeing a little bit of a green bar right now, but just barely uh, on very low volume too. So maybe we can get back up above $10. That's what we're really hoping for. Uh, but no guarantees with that. Obviously, you know, we're on a massive downtrend off of off of just traders escaping the stock ever since they got good news that uh, emergency use listing, I think it's called uh, at the WHO for their COVAX and vaccine. So uh, you know, no real reason why they should have dropped that much, but uh, it looked like it was by the rumor, sell the new situation. Yeah, so let's see. Emmanuel Tommy, what stocks do you trade or invest? Oh, a lot, a lot. Um, currently, currently, I'm in Prague. So let's see what Prague is doing. We're in Prague. Um, I'm hoping to get up, up back above four dollars pretty soon with Prague. I'm in FAMI. I'm in DWAC. I've got. I'm actually up decently on DWAC. Up about almost five grand. Up four thousand nine hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty cents since opening up that DWAC position. Got in an average of twenty four bucks. Um, but I'm in Clove, uh, invested in Clove over the long term. Lucid, uh, let's see, SBEA I've been buying up. MNMD is one I'm excited about. Uh, uh, very excited about MNMD. They're basically looking into psychedelic treatments and stuff for uh, for a various slew of mental illnesses and uh, experimenting with psilocybin and all that, all that kind of stuff. One of the first companies doing it. So uh, I've, I've uh, bought some shares of MNMD as well as sold put options on MNMD. So I will be, you know, potentially able to get some more shares if it drops enough. I think they're 250 puts, but I sold them with a dollar twenty-five premium. So my break even is uh is a dollar fifty, I think. Or uh something something like that. Hold on, two fifty and uh buck twenty-five was half of it. So uh, I think one twenty five is where I actually break even on that. So uh good stuff. But uh, yeah, also in a bunch of cannabis companies and gold stocks. So, so that's what I invest and trade. Um, 
And Daniel Brigo looks like Foon is about to rock it. P-H-U-N, let's see. Up 3% on the day. Okay, okay, they saw some movement. Let's see what happened. Um, no news, no news that came out over the past couple of minutes, at least that we know of. But big volume just came in, pushed them up. Uh, so that's good stuff. Good stuff up 3% on the day. Nice. And uh, Saucy Fredo's in, Foon at 419. Ambition's in at 790. Um, yeah, no, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but um, I, I just said it again. It's unfortunate. But, <laughs> uh, you know, the important thing to realize with PHUN and DWAC is that what we're really waiting for is Trump to talk. With PHUN, it's a little bit more risky because it's not as closely tied to Trump. There's no guarantee uh, that it is going to be linked to Trump's social media company. And at any point, you know, news could come out that uh, they are officially unlinked and that could cause a big, big shock to the stock price. However, PHUN is also uh, doing good for themselves by buying Bitcoin, right? Trying to get in with the Bitcoin community. I think they recognize the opportunity they have that they're a very popular stock right now and they're trying to popularize themselves more. So good on PHUN. And uh, Saucy Fredo set that stop loss at two or 4.30. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So we're getting close to it. We're getting close, getting very close. But uh, but uh, that is the stream for today, guys. It's 11. It's 11. It looks like we'll be ending the stream today around 11. So uh, it was fun. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I did. Uh, we, we looked at a lot of interesting stuff. It was interesting to see Tesla uh, somehow resist the urge to crash off of Elon selling 10% of his Tesla stock. So uh, I don't think he's sold all of it yet. He may have sold, started selling some, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and, and what his tweets in the future are regarding, um, regarding how much Tesla he sold and when. So yeah, Rob, that's unfortunate t-shirts. Where can I buy them? <laughs> One day, one day we'll make some of those. So other than that, guys, that's what we've got for you in this stream. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. So have a great one uh, and, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.